Candace opened the door unhappily, only to see Edward outside. I really don't want to deal with those old fogies, Edward said bluntly. Were they not his courtiers? How did he think those loyal to him would feel if they heard him say that? I'm sleepy. Let's take an afternoon nap together. Edward squatted down, picked Candace horizontally, and pressed her onto the bed. Candace was speechless. Paige is still here. She hit Edward's chest. So what do you think I will do? Edward asked her. Candace was stunned. You have such perverted thoughts now. Edward pressed his lips against hers tightly. F asterisk CK, who was the perverted one now? Candace pushed Edward away. Aren't you going to take an afternoon nap? Hurry up and sleep. Candace was exasperated. With that, Edward calmed down and hugged Candace tightly in his arms, as if he liked her scent. It did not take long before he fell asleep. He probably had the habit of taking afternoon naps. Candace did not want to sleep at first, but eventually, the sleepiness got to her. When she woke up halfway, she felt a small thing moving and crawling beside her like a cicada. She opened her eyes and saw Paige crawling over her body with all her might, trying to sleep between her and Edward. However, Edward was hugging her too tightly, and Paige could not fit in at all. Candace could not help but laugh when she saw Paige's expression, so she moved her body a little. Finally, Paige fell into the space between the two of them. Having been satisfied, she fell asleep peacefully. Sometimes, she really envied how easily satisfied children were. If they were Ziv and Kanth, Dev would think that the whole world was sweet. With that, she turned over to face Paige and fell asleep again. They were supposed to nap for one or two hours, but the family slept until dinner time. If not for the servants at home waking them up, they might have slept until tomorrow morning. They washed up briefly before they showed up in the living room together. By then, everyone else in the Nicholson's courtyard had left. After lunch, some people hung out for a while before leaving, while others left after lunch. In short, only the Nicholsons were left at night. Edward, Candace, and Paige sat at the dining table. I never realized you could sleep so much back then and didn't expect you to sleep for so long, Chloe deliberately said. It looked like she was just trying to liven up the atmosphere. Candace glanced at her and said, I fell asleep with Edward. Chloe's expression darkened a little. It was clear that she thought Candace was showing off. Edward has a lot of work to do every day, and it's hard for him to have free time. He should rest more, Wyatt quickly said. Edward does work hard. I often see him on the news having to go to all parts of the country and even overseas. Just thinking about it makes me tired, Chloe said with concern. Edward, I'll get you some pumpkin soup. No need. Edward rejected her directly. Her rejection of Chloe was obvious. It made Chloe, who had already stood up, feel a little embarrassed. She quickly said, in that case, I'll get a bowl for you, sister. After all, you have to take good care of Edward. Candace smiled in response. She could not reject Chloe. It was fine if Edward did not like Chloe because Wyatt and Claire, especially, would not dare to say anything even if they were angry. However, if she did not show Chloe any respect, they would probably think she was a bad person. Seeing that Candace did not refuse, Chloe eagerly scooped a bowl of soup and handed it to Candace. Just as Candace was about to take it, Chloe lost her balance. Just like that, the boiling soup landed on Chloe's hands. Instantly, she screamed, ah. Candace was surprised. She knew that Chloe must be up to no good for taking the initiative to express her goodwill, so she was prepared for Chloe to pour the soup on her hands. Unexpectedly, Chloe did it on herself instead. What was she trying to say? What's wrong? Claire's face turned pale. She quickly went over to take a look at Chloe. It hurts. Chloe was in so much pain that tears were streaming down her face. Quickly rinse it with cold water and call a private doctor over to take a look at second young lady immediately, Wyatt ordered. The hall suddenly became chaotic. Candace turned to look at Edward, who also turned to look at her. The two of them seemed to have a telepathic connection but they did not say anything to each other. Soon, the private doctor rushed to the Nicholson's courtyard. Chloe's hand was scalded. There were red and swollen blisters on it, and some of the skin had come off, making it look extremely hideous. It hurts. Candace was in so much pain that her tears kept falling when the medicine was applied. Mom, what happened to Aunt? Paige was horrified when she saw the scene. Aunt was scalded by the hot soup just now, and it hurts a lot. Paige, you have to be careful in the future. Don't hurt yourself, okay? Candace coaxed Paige gently. Candace was educating the child, but Chloe heard it differently. She thought what Candace meant was that it was her own fault for being careless and it had nothing to do with Candace. 
that woman is smart enough to absolve herself of responsibility, huh? Chloe gritted her teeth in pain and frustration. Look at you. You're so old, yet you can't even hold the bowl of soup properly, Claire criticized Chloe despite feeling a little sorry for Chloe. I've never done it before. I just wanted to treat my sister better, but I didn't expect myself to be so clumsy. I know you have a good relationship with your sister, but you have to act within your capabilities, Claire said dotingly. Candace found it funny that they were making a big deal out of a bowl of soup. I'll be more careful next time. Chloe nodded, feeling wronged. By then, the doctor had bandaged Chloe's hand. He reminded her, second young lady, the burns on your hand are very serious, but I've already bandaged your wounds. Be careful not to get it wet and try not to irritate the wound, or it could get easily infected. Once the wound is infected, it will be much more serious than the original injury. All right. Claire quickly said, I'll take good care of her. Thank you. As I should, the private doctor said respectfully. Mom, aren't you and Dad going on a trip tomorrow? Chloe suddenly said. How can we go with your condition? I'll stay at home with you. How can that do? You guys are usually so busy, and you can only go on a trip once a year. This has always been the rule since you got married. How can you change it just like that? So what if I don't go once? We can go next year or postpone it. Dad has applied for his annual leave. How can he change it just like that? You child dash. I'll go to Candace's house. Chloe suddenly said, since you're worried about me being alone at home, I'll go to her house for a week. After all, I have a good relationship with her, and I'm sure she won't mind it if I stay with her for a bit. Isn't that right, sister? Chloe's eyes were filled with anticipation, and her face looked innocent. Candace smiled. All right. It turned out Chloe was putting on an act tonight just to go to Edward's house. Since she knew Chloe's motive, she did not reject her. She just wanted Chloe to know her place. Otherwise, Chloe might think she was omnipotent. I knew you were the best. Chloe was very excited. She then said to her parents, Dad, Mom, this way, you can go on a vacation without worrying about me. Claire thought it was a good idea, but Wyatt, on the other hand, was worried. He said to Edward, Look, will it affect you? Candace's sister is my sister. Besides, Candace has the final say in everything at home. It meant that Candace could do whatever she wanted. At that, Chloe's expression darkened again. Candace was not usually good at seducing men, so how could she have Edward under her thumb? Could it be that Candace had fawned over Edward's daughter? For men with children, their children were their soft spot. She sneered to herself. Ever since she was young, her greatest ability had been her affinity with people. She refused to believe that she could not bribe a child. Not only would she bribe them, but she even wanted to use them. In that case, can I go with you tonight? Mom and Dad will be leaving Southampton City by plane early tomorrow morning, Chloe said. As long as it's convenient for you. Candace nodded. She did not sound too keen but did not reject the idea. Helen, Chloe called out to the maid at home. Pack some clothes for me, but nothing too much. Just something that can be used in daily life will do. Yes, second young lady. In fact, Chloe had already prepared her luggage. She had never failed in getting anything she wanted to do, including Edward. She had to get him. That night, Chloe followed Candace back to Bamboo Garden, and it was her first time visiting Edward's residence. She had always thought that with Edward's personality, the decoration style would be cold and would make people feel that it was very serious and dignified. However, she did not expect it to be so warm. The decoration in the house was not festive, but it gave off a very warm vibe. As she quietly sized up everything there, she saw that there was only one servant in the house, and it was a man. In that case, who would serve her? Teddy, Candace called out to Teddy, who was still busy. Come over here for a moment. Teddy quickly walked over. This is Chloe, my younger sister. She will be here for a week. Her right hand is injured and scalded. Please take care of her. Candace introduced him naturally. Yes, madam. Teddy appeared very respectful as he called out to Chloe respectfully, Ms. Nicholson, nice to meet you. I'm Teddy. Hello. I'll have to trouble you for the next few days. Chloe smiled in a friendly manner. In fact, she did not care about the servant in front of her. Especially when she heard him call Candace Madam and her miss, she felt inexplicably unhappy. Ms. Nicholson, you're too polite. It's my duty to serve. Chloe and Teddy exchanged a few pleasantries. She gave people the impression that she was very easygoing and did not put on any airs. I'll take you to your room. It's getting late, and you should rest early. Candace said, Teddy, please help Chloe with her luggage. 
All right. Candace handed Paige to Edward and took Chloe upstairs. Chloe got excited the moment she walked up to the second floor. The thought of her entering Edward's private space made her inexplicably excited. Sister, which room are you and Edward staying in? Chloe asked curiously. Candace pointed. This room. In that case, can I choose the room closest to you? I'm afraid I won't be used to living here, and I'll be more comfortable living next door to you. The room next door to mine is Paige's. Candace said bluntly, and across from ours is George. Chloe's face sank. There's only one guest room on the second floor. Candace pretended not to notice Chloe's expression and continued to say to herself, I don't want to live in the corner room. Then, there's only downstairs. Teddy lives downstairs, and there are two rooms next to him. Isn't the servant living downstairs? Chloe expressed her displeasure. That's why I brought you upstairs, Candace said matter-of-factly. Chloe forced herself to accept it. Anyway, she would be sleeping on the bed in the master bedroom one day. Here, Candace brought Chloe to the room at the end. In fact, the room had everything, including an attached bathroom. Still, Chloe walked in reluctantly, and Teddy put down her luggage. Teddy, you can go do your own thing now, Candace told Teddy to leave after he put the luggage down. Chloe's eyes widened. Was that servant not going to unpack her luggage for her? Chloe, I won't disturb you anymore. Your hand is injured. You should wash up and rest early. All right. Chloe nodded obediently. At the thought that her impatience would mess up a big plan, she chose to bear with it. She could not afford to fall out with Candace now. By the way, other than Paige, there's also George. George has a cold personality and doesn't like outsiders to get close to him. He's been injured and resting at home recently. Try not to provoke him, Candace reminded Chloe. Is George a bad person? Chloe asked. He's considered quite good, Candace replied. All right. Chloe nodded. However, she secretly knew that Candace was definitely afraid that she would curry favor with George. After all, it was rumored that Edward loved his son, George, the most because he was Jean's son. Therefore, as long as she could please George, she would most likely become the mistress of the house and the most respected wife in the country. Chloe was secretly coming up with a scheme in her mind. I'll leave first. If there's anything, you can come and look for me. Sure. With that, Candace left and closed the door for Chloe. Hopefully, Chloe could behave herself, or she would be courting death. Candace did not return to her room immediately. Instead, she walked into George's room, and George seemed to have given in to her as the door was not locked from the inside. When she walked in, George was lying in bed reading a book. George's behavior was different from children of the same age. Children of the same age would never be as self-disciplined as George. Even if no one had disciplined him, he would arrange his own study time reasonably. George was expressionless when he saw Candace return. His little face looked cold. Candace stared at George for a long time until it made George feel uncomfortable. He frowned and touched his face, thinking that there was something on his face, which made him a little embarrassed. There's nothing on your face, and you're especially handsome, Candace said bluntly. George turned to look at Candace. How would she know what he was thinking? Then, why are you staring at me? George was annoyed. When it came to Candace, he could not stay calm for even a minute. I'm thinking that with such a handsome face, even if you have a bad personality, there should still be girls who like you, Candace said seriously. George blushed at her words. However, he said angrily, Candace, I'm only ten years old. Is it appropriate for you to tell me this? But you understand it, don't you? Since you do, what's inappropriate about it? Candace asked. George's little face twisted in anger. Don't worry. I won't mind even if you get into a relationship at a young age. I can even help you by getting your father to accept it. I won't fall in love at a young age, nor will I fall in love. Get out. George believed that Candace would anger him to death one day. Candace, however, did not react to George's temper. She smiled and said, I came to see you today because I have something to tell you. Tell me quickly. He did not want to see her for even a minute. However, unknowingly, he had begun to accept her matters. In the past, his instinctive reaction would be I don't want to know. My sister, Chloe, will be staying with us for a week. Enneve, she doesn't have good intentions, so you should be mentally prepared, Candace said bluntly. Is she worse than you? George asked. Candace was stunned for a moment before she smiled. A different kind of worse. George frowned. You're exceptionally smart. You'll know when you see her. I'm more than smart. George was a little angry. You're smart and wise. Candace found another word. Hurry up and leave. I want to rest. 
George did not know why he was being led by the nose by Candace. He was just fine alone, yet the woman insisted on disturbing his life. He even had to chase her away several times tonight, but she had yet to leave. Good night. Candace smiled brightly. She also knew that if she stayed any longer, George would probably have a mental breakdown. Seeing that George's long face was back again, Candace left. Then, the moment she pushed open the door to her and Edward's room, she froze because she saw Chloe in a spaghetti strap dress in the room while Edward was on the bed. That scene made her a little unhappy. Sis, where did you go? Before Candace could get angry, Chloe asked. Candace held it in and said, Why are you looking for me? I can't use the bathroom in the room. Plus, my right hand is injured, so it's very inconvenient for me to take a shower. I wanted to take a shower with you, but I didn't expect you to not be in when I pushed open your door, Chloe said happily. What gave her the right to act so self-righteous when she was the one who barged into someone else's room? Let's go. I'll go back to your room with you to take a shower. I'll shower here, so you don't have to go back and forth. I'll go back to my room after the shower. I've brought my undergarments. Chloe said, Edward, you don't mind, right? As she spoke, she deliberately waved her bright red bra and pants. Edward's eyes shifted, and he looked at Candace. However, before Candace could answer, Chloe had already walked into the bathroom. In the bathroom, she called out, Sis, come in, and let's take a shower together. We haven't taken a shower together in a long time. Candace pursed her lips. In the end, she walked into the bathroom, where Chloe had started to take off her clothes even though the bathroom door was not closed. After locking the door, Candace also began to take off her clothes. Sister, don't you think I have a good figure? Chloe stood in front of the mirror and looked at herself. It's pretty good, Candace responded. She seemed a little cold. Chloe snickered to herself. She was certain that Candace was jealous of her. After the two of them went through puberty, her figure was obviously much better than Candace's. Candace had a well-proportioned figure, but she was definitely not as voluptuous and slender as Chloe. When the two of them stood next to each other, the man would notice her immediately and never spare Candace a second glance. Edward was unaware of her beauty, which was why he was seduced by Candace. She watched as Candace slowly took off her clothes. She wanted to surpass Candace in every way and make Candace feel ashamed. While Chloe was deep in her thoughts, Candace took off all her clothes. However, the moment she took it off, Chloe's eyes widened. Since when did Candace have such a good figure? Even a woman would be moved by her beauty. There was not an ounce of fat on her body, and every part of her body looked good. That woman, did she go for plastic surgery on her body in order to marry Edward? Protect your hands well and come over to take a shower. Candace pretended not to notice Chloe's gaze and called out to her calmly. Chloe came back to her senses and looked at the two bodies in the mirror. Even if she did not want to admit it, she had to admit that Candace had turned crushed her in a second. No wonder Edward liked Candace so much. He must have been seduced by her body. She could not believe that in order to secure her position as Edward's woman, that shameless woman actually went under the knife. Candace had no sense of shame at all. She was displeased, but she still walked toward Candace and showered with the latter's help. Sis, did you do anything to your body? Chloe looked friendly and sincere. Your figure looks better now. No, or perhaps, I don't remember. Candace said, my memory has been blank for a long time. To Chloe's ears, Candace was tacitly agreeing to having done surgery on her body, but she just found an easy excuse to cover up. Do you really not remember what happened in the past? Chloe asked. She refused to believe that a person could lose her memory just like that. She had a feeling that Candace was pretending to be pitiful so that her father would treat her better, and that was why she married Edward. I don't remember, Candace answered. Her heart suddenly skipped a beat, and a memory seemed to flash past her mind again. However, it also felt like she was dreaming because those memories had nothing to do with her being Candace. I'm so sad for you. Chloe looked very sad. Candace looked at her indifferently. Of course, she did not expose Chloe. Instead, she said, it's fine. I'm used to it. I will spend more time with you in the future, Chloe said considerately. Candace smiled faintly and found it funny. What confidence did Chloe have to think her despicable methods could work on me? She also somehow found Chloe inferior after getting to know many people. After the two of them took a shower, Candace went out in her pajamas. Chloe, too, was wearing the pajamas that she had worn when she came. It was bright red, spaghetti-strapped, and showed a lot of skin. She had just taken a shower and deliberately did not dry her body completely to make herself look more seductive. 
Then, she walked out before Candace could put on her clothes. Meanwhile, Candace looked at Chloe's back with a faint smile and continued to put on her clothes slowly. She did not feel much for Chloe, so she was not so kind as to remind her not to court her own death. In any case, Chloe deserved what would happen to her in the end. Candace put on her clothes and walked out to see that Edward's back was facing Chloe. Chloe was calling out to him, Edward, are you asleep? Edward pretended not to hear her. Are you asleep so soon? I just wanted to thank you for letting me come to your house and reunite with my sister. I've really missed her. Still, Edward did not respond. Chloe stomped her feet in anger. She could not believe that Edward did not even look at her sexy look. She gritted her teeth and told herself that he was not in a hurry. There was still a week left anyway, and she refused to believe that she could not seduce Edward. She said, in that case, I'll head back to my room first. Good night, Edward. She turned to Candace and said, Good night, sis. Candace nodded, and Chloe left unwillingly. After that, Candace closed the door. Lock it. In the room, Edward instructed her in a low voice. It turned out the man was just pretending to be asleep because he did not want to talk to Chloe. Candace locked the door as she was told and then returned to her bed. The moment she crawled into bed, Edward pressed her body down. What are you doing? What else is there besides you? The corners of Edward's lips curled up into a smile. In front of outsiders, a man who was upright, serious, calm, and reserved was really horny in private. Candace decided to play hard to get. She said, don't tell me you were teased by Chloe? You knew her purpose for coming, but you still don't stop her. Do you think your husband, I, has strong willpower, or do you think Chloe doesn't have the assets? I want to drive her out and leave nothing behind. Candace enunciated each word. I accept your reason. Edward smiled. The next second, the two of them made crazy and passionate love in bed. Candace always felt that it was not bad to spend a lifetime with Edward. Other than the fact that he could not forget Jean, everything else was fine. She even liked his children. Hence, she had never thought she would give Edward up. Under the same night sky, Knox was bored out of his mind. He thought that he would be in a better mood now that his marriage was on the agenda. After all, he felt that it was a rare thing for him to be able to settle down with a woman. He should be proud of himself and celebrate. However, for some reason, he still felt frustrated. He called Finn, wanting the latter to accompany him out for a drink to relieve his boredom, only for Finn to reject his invitation. Finn said he was now the father of two and had a greater responsibility of taking care of his child. Finn's news triggered Knox even more. In the beginning, Knox thought that Finn would die alone. However, a woman started pursuing him later on, and he became the fastest one to get married among the three of them. Although his marriage did not go well, they got back together and separated many times. Just when he thought that Finn was going to die alone again, Finn suddenly told him that he was going to be a father. At that time, he was talking to Zoe about marriage and was still hesitant about it. However, Finn's news triggered him so badly that he was not hesitant about it anymore. He, too, could be a father, a father of twins. Or even if he could not be the father of twins, he could at least have two kids in three years. In any case, he could not fall behind Monica and Finn. Yet, now that everything was settled and confirmed, he felt empty and lonely again. Knox put out his cigarette and dialed Zoe's number. Where are you? Knox asked. What's wrong? I have something on tonight and might not be able to come over, Zoe quickly said. At that moment, she was at the nightclub. The thought of her getting married. To Knox in a month made her want to indulge herself. She had never thought that Knox would want to marry her. Although she knew that Knox was serious about her and that they were dating on the premise of marriage, she had always thought that Knox would not marry her so soon. Knox did not look like someone who wanted to be a father but someone who was more suitable for dating. Therefore, she had always thought that their relationship could last for a while and that she could have fun for a year and a half. Unexpectedly, Knox suddenly made up his mind to get married. Since he had brought it up, she definitely could not reject him. She could only show his enthusiasm and excitement as she agreed. After agreeing, her first thought was to have as much fun as she could before getting married. I know you have something to do, but I just wanted to ask you where you are. I'm a little bored, so I'll come over to look for you. Zoe's body stiffened. Knox wanted to come and look for her? She was just looking for an excuse. How was she going to cover up her lie now? Why? Is it inconvenient? Knox sounded a little angry. No, I'm just afraid that you'll know that I'm at the nightclub, Zoe said carefully. To her, the most perfect lie was to make everything that was fake become real. Do you think I'm such a petty person? 
What's wrong with having a meal with friends and then having some fun with them? Yeah, Zoe replied, come over then. I'm in room 999. I can introduce my friends to you. We've all been busy, so you haven't gotten to know many of them. They will be at our wedding as well. All right. Knox hung up. He was actually looking down on himself. He used to be the king of having fun, but now he was so embarrassed by the fact that he wanted to join someone else's fun. Knox soon arrived at room 999. In the private room, the lighting was all right and not particularly dark. Moreover, it was not particularly noisy. It was just some young people drinking peacefully. When Knox entered, everyone looked at him. Shelley immediately saw him too, and at that moment, she could not help but grin. To think Knox had walked into the den where he was cuckolded. There were six men inside, and all of them had an affair with Zoe. It made Shelley rather curious as to how Knox would get along with them. Shelley stood at the side as if she did not exist and looked at Knox while everyone was surrounding and welcoming Knox warmly. Hello, young Master Winter. Young Master Winter, your reputation precedes you. Young Master Winter. Knox was used to being complimented by others, so he reacted to them naturally. Shelley looked at Knox and realized that the guy was not here to catch them in the act. No wonder the men and women in there were behaving differently. Just a 11101111E11L ago, Louis were DLL Killis UI. CLDZYDLU ILUIS 11LL11H1GS. She thought that people in the city people knew how to have fun, but on the contrary, it was because Knox was coming. In fact, everyone was helping Zoe put on an act. Zoe held Knox's arm intimately and introduced him to a man. Knox, this is Cody. His family has some business with mine, and his father is very close to mine. The last time I was drunk, he was the one who sent me back. Hello, young Master Winter. Cody took the initiative to greet him and raised his wine glass to toast him. Hello. Knox also drank with him. Because of work, I often meet Zoe, and she often talks about you. Cody started the conversation. They were chatting as friends, and Knox did not put on airs. In front of Zoe's friends, he made sure to show them the respect they deserved. He would not refuse anyone who came to toast him and would occasionally take the initiative to drink with them. Shelley thought Knox deserved to be cuckolded for trusting Zoe so much. Waiter, two more beers please, Cody instructed Shelley. Shelley quickly responded by speaking into the microphone and asking the staff at the nightclub to send over two bottles of beer. After that, she squatted on the ground and opened them one by one, placing them on the coffee table in front of her. Then, she placed the empty beer bottles they had drunk earlier into the beer boxes. She did it very seriously and naturally. When Knox lowered his head to grab a beer, he glanced at it and saw the waitress, Shelley, kneeling on the ground. For some reason, he was a little angry, just like every time he saw Shelley. What's wrong? Zoe, who sat beside him, immediately noticed his emotions. That was probably why Zoe had not failed for so long. It was because she had always been meticulous and cautious, so she could feel the slightest change in. Knox. It's nothing. Even then, Knox's tone seemed to have changed. Zoe could not help but glance at the waitress kneeling on the ground and thought she was quite good-looking. Could it be that Knox had a type? However, she did not care. To her, no woman was a threat to her as she was confident that Knox was hers. As the night deepened, the men and women in the private room drank more and more. It was never-ending. Zoe, who was a little drunk, walked into the bathroom in the private room. Just as she entered, a figure nimbly followed her in and closed the toilet door behind him. Are you crazy? Zoe lowered her voice and asked Cody. Isn't it exciting? Are you crazy? No matter how exciting it is, I will not do anything in front of. Knox. Get out. Why are you so agitated? Did I say I was going to F asterisk CK you? Cody smiled evilly. What do you want to do? I'm just reminding you that there's no such thing as a secret in this world. The fact that you cheated on Knox behind his back will be exposed one day. Are you threatening me? Zoe's expression darkened. Can you not think of me as such a despicable person? I'm just trying to help you. What do you mean? Zoe frowned. What I mean is, if one day you're exposed for cheating on Knox while you're dating him, you'd better get evidence that Knox was also cheating on you. Do you think Knox is still the same as he was before? Ever since he got together with me, he hasn't had any improper relationships with other women. That's why I'm telling you to create evidence. Can you just say what you want to say? Zoe's expression was grim. All right, I'll be straightforward. Cody looked at Zoe. You must have noticed Knox's strange gaze when he looked at the waitress in our private room. 
Through careful observation, I noticed that the waitress is indeed good-looking and has an inexplicable innocence to her. In a place like a nightclub, she naturally stands out. Is she that good-looking? Zoe was naturally unhappy that the man was judging other women like that. Of course, her beauty is nothing like yours, Cody quickly added. Nothing a man says can be trusted. All right, don't be jealous. Let's get to the point. Tell me. Take this opportunity to let Knox sleep with the waitress. When the time comes, take a video of them sleeping together. Once you're exposed, you can use this as an exchange and leverage with Knox. Are you crazy? Why would I let my man sleep with someone else? Zoe naturally could not accept it. Calm down and think about the benefits of doing this. Don't forget that other than your relationship with Knox, your family still has to rely on Knox for support. If Knox really finds out that you cheated on him, won't your family go bankrupt? Cody said, I also think that we should get along and I can give you some advice. But you're thinking of getting Knox to sleep with another woman. Why? You're allowed to be with other men, but Knox isn't allowed to be with other women? Are you women so selfish? Zoe pursed her lips. In any case, she found it a little unacceptable. Actually, it's no big deal for Knox to sleep with a waitress because he would never marry a waitress. Even if Knox slept with her, she wouldn't threaten your status as the winter's eldest young mistress. In that case, why don't I find an ugly woman to sleep with Knox? If the woman's too ugly, what can you do with the video? If Knox insists he was drunk, what can you say then? Just find someone better looking and make it hard for him to defend himself. Zoe was still hesitant about the idea. You have a good opportunity today. If you want me to get someone to get it for you immediately, there are a lot of drugs in the nightclub. But if you have enough confidence in yourself, do whatever you want. I'm just giving you advice from the perspective of an observer. Cody did not force the idea on her. I'll head out first. Wait a minute, Zoe suddenly called out to him. Cody turned around. We'll do as you say. Zoe gritted her teeth. She had to give herself some protection. If Knox really found out about her, she would be bankrupt, and she could not accept that result. Zoe was originally a little drunk, but because of what she had to do, she instantly sobered up. When she returned to the private room, Cody was downing drink after drink with Knox, who did not reject him. In any case, he could drink with anyone. Zoe also knew that Knox had a good tolerance for alcohol and liked to drink, but she had not seen him drink like that with outsiders in a long time. He would usually only indulge like that with Edward and Finn. It was rare for him to indulge himself like that when he was alone. It felt as if Knox was deliberately getting drunk today, and he did not seem to be in a good mood. To be precise, Knox had been in a bad mood over the last few days. The two of them were talking about the wedding. Although he was the one who brought it up, she sometimes felt that he seemed passive about it. Anyway, it was very strange. It made Zoe wonder if Knox also had a phobia of marriage but was just getting himself to overcome it. She returned to Knox's side and intimately pressed her entire body against Knox's. Knox also took the opportunity to hug Zoe, making the two of them look very intimate. Shelly, on the other hand, just looked at him indifferently. In fact, she felt pretty good. In the beginning, she thought she would be a good person and let Knox know what kind of person Zoe was. Now, she suddenly found it quite satisfying to not be a good person. She watched as Zoe played Knox like a fool. She even thought that if Knox found out one day, she would piss him off on purpose. Just thinking about that scene made her very happy. Waitress, Zoe suddenly called out to her. Shelley was a little distracted, and at that moment, she could not hide the smile on her face. Just the thought of certain scenes made her smile happily. Knox, on the other hand, was glaring at her. He thought, that woman is crazy. Why is she laughing out of the blue? Had she lost her mind because she was too shocked? Was he too intimate with Zoe that caused Shelley to be bewitched? However, in the next second, he felt that he had nothing to do with Shelley. Why did her jealousy have to do with him? Why should he care about her feelings? At that thought, he hugged Zoe tighter and even planted a kiss on Zoe's face. Feeling Knox's affection for her tonight, Zoe was a little hesitant. Should she do it? Would she hurt Knox if she did that? No matter how she looked at the situation, she believed Knox loved her deeply. As the two of them flirted in front of everyone, Zoe seemed to have forgotten that she was calling Shelly. Shelly, on the other hand, was distracted and did not hear Zoe. Now, seeing the interaction between the two of them, Shelly's smile became even more obvious. She had always found the two of them to be a match made in heaven, so she had to resist the urge to be a good person and separate them. The night deepened, but no one had the intention of leaving. Shelly looked at the time. 
It was past 1 a.m. Every time she worked the night shift, it would seriously affect her sleep. How much longer were those people going to drink? Waitress, Zoe suddenly called out to Shelly. Shelly was not distracted this time. In fact, she was hoping those people would leave immediately. Hence, she quickly went over and knelt on the ground. That was how they were supposed to treat their high-level VIPs. In such an expensive private room, all the waitresses would kneel as they served the customers. Knox looked at Shelly's humble behavior. Get me a glass of water, Zoe ordered. Yes, Shelly said respectfully. She could not help but feel a little disappointed as she thought that Zoe would tell her to get the bill. Knox, however, saw everything in her eyes. He could tell that Shelly was in a bad mood tonight, but he had no obligation to care about how she felt. After Shelly stood up and left, Knox continued to be intimate with Zoe and drank with the others. The atmosphere in the room was great. Knox, probably having drank a little too much, leaned close to Zoe's ear. I'm going to the washroom. I'll go with you. No need. I'm not drunk yet. Um, all right. Knox stood up and walked out of the private room. There was a washroom in the room, but Zoe was not surprised to see Knox walk out. She assumed Knox was going to sober up. After all, he had drunk a lot tonight. The purpose of tonight was to get Knox drunk because she wanted him to do something premeditated while he was unconscious. Knox walked out of the private room but did not go far. Instead, he just stood at the door and took out a cigarette to smoke. That was when he saw Shelly walking over with a tray and a glass of water. The moment Shelly walked over, she saw Knox but pretended not to see him. She pushed open the door and was about to enter when Knox asked her coldly, Shelly, aren't you going to beg me? Shelly felt like she had just heard the biggest joke in the world. Even if begging him was useful, she could not allow herself to live like that. It was also because she knew Knox's attitude toward her that she refused to humiliate herself. It was not easy for her to live well, and with just one word from Knox, he could make her go back to the days when she had to please him. Although money attracted her, dignity was also important. She could not lose her values and herself because of money. Forget about the past, she had to set a good example now. To a child, values were the most important. Shelly. Knox grabbed her arm. Shelly was still holding the tray in her hand, and because of Knox's sudden action, the cup on the tray suddenly fell over. In order to prevent the cup from falling to the ground, Shelly grabbed it with her hands. Inevitably, the boiling water landed on the back of her hand. It was so painful that Shelly wanted to scream, but she endured it. She just knew Knox's greatest pleasure in life was to torture her to death. She was just a little greedy when she was young, thinking she would eventually become the winter's young mistress, so she did some extreme things. However, it had been a few years. How petty was Knox to still bear a grudge against her? Are you stupid? Knox suddenly roared when he saw Shelly reach for the cup with her bare hands. He could tell how hot the water in the cup was by how red Shelly's hand had turned. Yet, that woman did not even make a sound. She did not even respond to Knox's curses. Anyway, she said that she did not want to break the cup and pay for it, which Knox thought was hilarious. It was just as funny as how she thought that Knox being cuckolded was. What are you waiting for? Go and rinse it with cold water. Knox was speechless. He immediately wanted to drag Shelly over. I can go by myself. Shelly pushed Knox away. Knox frowned as he felt that Shelly was against him. The moment his hand touched her wrist, she immediately pushed it away, as if she had touched something dirty. F asterisk CK. How dare Shelly has the nerve to despise me? She should look at what kind of person she is before judging me. He knew that any woman who worked in the nightclub, including the waiters, could be taken away as long as someone paid them. How could Shelly have the cheek to treat him like that? It did not look like she was playing hard to get. It was a deep sense of rejection. Damn it. In the past two years, Shelly had become more and more skilled at seducing men. However, Knox could not be bothered with Shelly. He put out his cigarette and walked back to the private room, where Zoe was still waiting for him with a smile. Shelly was really worthless compared to Zoe. When Knox returned to the sofa, Zoe handed him a glass of wine, and he glanced at her. We're getting married soon. I want to have a drink with you alone. Zoe seemed a little shy as she said that. Knox smiled and took Zoe's wine glass, not finding anything unusual. At that, Zoe seemed to smile even brighter. She said, Knox, I can't wait to get married to you. Me, too. With that, Knox and Zoe clinked their glasses. At that moment, everyone else in the private room was also looking at the two of them. Let's raise our glasses to the couple, someone jeered. 
Knox and Zoe exchanged glances while everyone downed the drink in their hands. Now, give your fiancé a kiss, someone said deliberately. Knox was actually not interested in doing those childish things, but at that moment, he saw Zoe leaning in to kiss him. Not wanting to spoil Zoe's mood, Knox decided to lean in and kiss her Zoe in front of everyone. He would just it take as a proposal since he did not propose to her. All he did was talk about marriage with Zoe and then start preparing for the wedding. As the two of them kissed passionately, everyone watched them with excitement. When Shelley came in with another cup of water, she saw the scene and realized how Zoe could easily deceive Knox. It was because everyone here was putting on an act with Zoe. The two kissed for a long time, and it made Zoe so shy that she leaned against Knox's chest. Her behavior was a world difference compared to when Knox was not around. Seeing their kiss had ended, Shelley walked over and bent down to put the water in front of Zoe. Then, she picked up two pieces of ice from the coffee table and put them in, turning the water warm. After that, she stood up respectfully and left to stand at the side obediently, waiting for orders. What she wanted the most now was for them to call it a night as soon as possible. If not, she could not go back. The men and women in the private room stayed for a while until around 2 a.m., people began to leave. In the end, only Knox was left, drunk on the sofa, while Zoe was nowhere to be found. The two of them were originally together, but Zoe left with someone after that. Shelley thought she was just going to the washroom and did not expect her not to come back. It was either she was so drunk that she had forgotten about her husband or she deliberately left the drunk Knox behind and went to have fun. However, what Zoe was doing had nothing to do with her. At that moment, she knew that if Knox did not leave, she would not be able to get off work tonight. It was because the time they got off work was determined by the moment the last customer left. As such, Shelley forced herself to wait for a while. She wondered whether Zoe would come back after she cheated but figured the latter should be back soon. Hence, she waited for half an hour, but Zoe was still not back. Shelley looked at the time. It was 3 a.m. in the morning. In the end, she gritted her teeth and decided not to care. She walked toward Knox and kneeled in front of him. Knox, get up. They've all left. Knox was unconscious and did not seem to hear her. Knox. Shelley called out to him. Considering how Knox assaulted her the last time he was drunk, this time, she would not touch him. She even kept a distance from him. However, the man in front of her seemed to be asleep and was not moving at all. Shelley was speechless, but she then wondered if she could leave first. Just as she had that thought, she dismissed it. If she left the guest alone in the room, her salary would definitely be deducted or she might even be fired. It was not easy for her to work in the VIP area. Not only did she have the opportunity to get tips, but she also earned a lot. Shelley hesitated for a while. In the end, she gave in and stood up. She was about to walk to the side and watch Knox sleep when her body suddenly jerked as the person on the sofa pulled her back and thrown onto the sofa. It was so rough that it frightened her. Having been pinned down by Knox, she could feel that the heat on his body was abnormal. Moreover, the emptiness and desire in his eyes. Shelley seemed to realize in an instant that Knox had been drugged. Who drugged him? When was he drugged? Why was Knox drugged? What the hell was Zoe doing? Oh. Shelley's lips were suddenly sealed by Knox's. Shelley twisted her body and resisted with all her might. It was obvious that Knox was behaving differently from the last time. Last time, he reacted based on his nature as a man and did not go out of control. This time, it was pure desire. Let go of me, Knox. Let go of me. Shelley shouted. Just as she said that, Knox kissed her again, on the lips and with his tongue. He kissed her so hard that she could not breathe. Shelley, on the other hand, felt disgusted. She could even recall the scene of Knox kissing Zoe. When she thought of that scene, she was even more disgusted. She pushed Knox frantically and finally pushed his lips away from hers. She said hurriedly, Knox, calm down. Let go of me, and I'll help you find Zoe. Anyway, she had Zoe's number. Considering the state Knox was in, Zoe probably would not abandon Knox to have sex with another man, or that was what Shelley thought. Nevertheless, she used all her strength to kick Knox away, and Knox was pushed down under the sofa by that sudden force. Shelley did not even have time to tidy up her clothes before ran out of the room. The most important thing now was to escape. Then, she would call Zoe after she escaped. In no time, Shelley rushed out of the door. She opened the door and was about to leave when the door was slammed shut. Seeing that, Shelley tugged at the door handle, trying to pull it open. 
However, at that moment, Sneet helped Tiani man Bemkel na. The waitress at the nightclub were all dressed in white shirts, black vests, and short skirts, which were really easy to lift. Before Shelly could react. Damn it. That be asterisk starred. Shelly clenched her fists. The only person or man she hated the most in her life was Knox. How much did she owe him to be abused by him like that? Late at night, Shelly finally left in a taxi. At that time, dawn had broken. Ever since she was promoted to the VIP area of the nightclub, she had quit her part-time job of selling breakfast in the morning. Yet now, she pondered whether she should return to her old lifestyle. Although it was a little tiring, she would not bump into Knox so frequently. In fact, once she had earned enough money, she wanted to take Bella and leave Southampton City. Anyway, she did not have any relatives or friends here, nor did she have anything to worry about. If she went to any other city, she would be able to live a good life with Bella. While Shelley was thinking about those things, the car arrived at Sarah's neighborhood. In order to save money, she was living with Sarah. She actually did not want to owe anyone a favor, but sometimes, she had to give in to realities. She returned home and carefully opened the door to the quiet house. Just as Shelley was about to return to her room, Sarah suddenly opened her door. Shelley. Startled, Shelley looked at Sarah. It just seems to me that you're coming back later and later, which isn't good. Sarah said seriously, Bella is so young. Aren't you worried about her? Shelley remained silent. Every night, Bella would wait eagerly for you to come back. Sometimes, she'll even wait until 1 a.m. or 2 a.m. at night. Now that you're coming back later and later, she really can't take it anymore and will fall asleep as soon as she sits on the bed. Sarah could not bear to watch Bella suffer like that any longer. Therefore, she did not sleep much that night, just so that she could have a good talk with Shelly. Tonight is a special occasion. I usually won't get back so late, Shelly explained. Usually, you would only get back at 1 a.m. at the earliest. Have you ever thought about how much Bella misses you every night? Give up your job at the nightclub and do something else. Sarah said, why don't I introduce you to a job at my cousin's pharmaceutical company? Although the income might not be high, it's much better than you living in a regular life. You should think about Bella. All right. Shelley nodded. She thought Sarah was right. However, as for whether she would follow Sarah's advice or not, she still had to think about it carefully before doing anything. She amused she could not rely on anyone else in the world except herself, even though she once thought that she could covet the winter's money. Later on, after Knox humiliated her, it was not easy for her to know her worth and set up her boundaries, so she did not want to repeat the same mistake again. Sigh, go to bed early. You've worked hard. Sarah sighed, feeling sorry for Shelley. After all, Shelley did not want to do so either. As a single mother with no diploma or skills, it was not easy for her to raise a child on her own. More importantly, Shelley would always refuse the money she gave her. Sarah did not know how that woman could have such strong self-esteem. You should sleep more too. Your skin will only recover if you get enough sleep. Shelley smiled faintly. It was as if she could accept everything she encountered calmly. As Sarah nodded and returned to her room, Shelley also entered her room, in which Bella was sleeping soundly on the large bed. In fact, she could imagine the pitiful look on Bella's face as Bella waited for her to sleep with her every night. However, she had no choice because Bella was different from other normal children. She was born deaf. She could not hear anything at all in one ear and could barely hear with a hearing aid in the other. She had brought Bella to the various hospitals for a checkup. The doctor said that Bella's condition could be treated with surgery, but the surgery was very expensive. From the initial examination to the surgery to the long-term treatment, the doctor said that it would cost at least $50,000. According to the doctor, the sooner Bella's surgery was done, the better. That was why she desperately wanted to earn money. However, no matter how hard she worked or how frugal she was, saving $500,000 was really difficult. The whole thing discouraged her a little, and she thought, why don't I just let Bella be since one of her ears was barely functional? However, the doctor said that it was very likely that during the process of development, Bella's ear might become completely deaf. Shelly sighed. The moment she wanted to stroke Bella's little pink face, she gave up for fear that she would dirty Bella. With that, she turned around and went to the bathroom to wash up. She then took off her clothes, revealing her body that was covered in bruises. Knox did not even feel any pity for her when he was sober, let alone when he was unconscious. Now, her entire body looked as terrifying as it could be. Shelly did not react much to how her body looked. 
she just took it as if she had been bitten by a dog that had bitten her many times. In any case, she would be able to leave Southampton City with Bella one day. She took a quick shower and then searched for some burn medicine at home. Although there were many marks on her body, they were all bites, bruises, and hickeys. If she did not touch them, she would not feel any pain. However, she could not ignore the injury on the back of her hand. Fortunately, Sarah's aunt was really attentive to her. From time to time, she would come over and give Sarah all her daily necessities, so they definitely had medicine for burns. Shelley gently rubbed it on herself, and the cool feeling made her feel much better. After she was done, she lay back down on the bed. By then, it was already 6 a.m. in the morning. She could still sleep for two hours, and two hours later, she would have to take Bella for a regular ear checkup. When Knox woke up, it was already morning, and he sleeping on his own bed. He could not even remember how he came back or what he did last night. That was the first time he had lost his memory after getting drunk. Knox. The woman beside him suddenly called out to him. Are you awake? Knox turned to look at Zoe, who was lying in bed. Somehow, he had a feeling that something was wrong. Did you send me home last night? Knox asked. No Zoe said, we were both drunk last night, and I don't know how we got back as well. But when I woke up, I was already on your bed. My friend probably sent us back. Is that so? Knox muttered. It was not that he doubted her, but he found it a little hard to believe that he blanked out. Are you feeling unwell? Zoe looked at him. Do you have a hangover? No Knox shook his head. Sleep a little while longer. I'm going to take a shower. All right. Knox walked to the bathroom and took off his clothes, which were the same set of clothes he wore last night. It was clear that he had come back unconscious. Otherwise, he would not have gone to bed without taking a shower or changing his clothes. The moment he took off his clothes that reeked of alcohol, he froze. He looked at the huge mirror and saw terrifying scratch marks all over his body. What did he do last night? Just then, some images suddenly appeared in his mind. It was all Shelley. F asterisk CK. I've been raped by Shelley. Knox immediately came back to his senses. Last night, he seemed to have done it with Shelley. It was not a dream. If he was dreaming, how could there be so many marks on his body? It could not be Zoe because Zoe would never treat him like that, so it was definitely Shelley. As soon as he recalled it, it made him inexplicably angry. To think Shelley had used such a despicable method to scheme against him. It even struck him now that he was drugged. If not, how could he have sex with Shelley, that shameless bitch? The more Knox thought about it, the angrier he got. He was so angry that he was about to smoke. Outside the bathroom, Zoe knocked on the door. Knox, I want to shower with you. No. Knox hurriedly locked the door. If Zoe saw the marks on his body, it would be a disaster. Hence, he quickly said, I'll be done soon. You can take a shower yourself later. Oh. Zoe was always very obedient. No matter what he said, she would agree. That made Knox start to feel guilty toward Zoe, and for that, he really wanted to strangle Shelley. Knox quickly took a shower, changed into a set of pajamas that fully covered his body, and came out of the bathroom. Zoe, who was always smiling at him, hugged his arm affectionately, and Knox's body froze for some reason, like he did not know what to do after doing something bad. I've made you a cup of tea, and it'll sober you up. I'm going to take a shower. All right. Zoe kissed his cheek before walking into the bathroom. Knox felt bad and was wondering if he should tell Zoe. If he told her, Zoe would be sad, but if he did not tell her, he would feel that he was hiding it from Zoe. Hence, he thought about it and gave Finn a call. Finn had just accompanied Monica to Cardellini Enterprise. To be precise, he was not accompanying but following. Every day, he would follow behind Monica and try to make his presence known. He looked at Knox's call and picked it up. If you had an affair, how would you explain it to Monica? Knox asked immediately. I will never have an affair. Finn enunciated each word. Forced to have an affair. I will never be forced. Hypothetically. It will never happen. Finn. Knox was about to explode with anger. Did you cheat? Finn knew Knox's personality all too well. If Knox had not run into trouble, he would not take the initiative to look for him. I was drugged. By who? A slut. So, you cheated on Zoe a month before you're supposed to get married, Finn concluded. I'm not asking you to come to a conclusion. I'm asking you, what would you do if you encountered such a situation? Will he confess to Monica? I will never encounter such a situation, Finn said stubbornly. All right, now that I've encountered it, how do you think I should deal with it? 
First of all, you have to figure out why you cheated. Were you really drugged or seduced? If you were drugged and forced, it's understandable. But if you were seduced, even a little bit, I think your marriage is over. Of course, I was forced, and I regret it now. If you were forced and want your wedding to go ahead, you must do two things. First, find the person who drugged you and cut off your relationship with her, especially anything that can come and bite you back in the in the future. What I'm talking about is pregnancy and whatnot anything that will tie you back to her. Knox was stunned. At that moment, he could not help but admire Finn's seriousness in handling matters. However, he never thought Shelley would trick him like that. If she really did that, perhaps his parents and grandfather would want him to marry Shelley immediately. Once you've done the first thing, you should come clean to Zoe. Hiding something like this is the greatest harm to your relationship. If Zoe understands, you can continue with the wedding. If not, it's best you go your separate ways. As Knox quietly listened to Finn's suggestion, he heard Finn say, this is the least harmful method I can think of for both of you. Knox stayed silent. In fact, he agreed with Finn's point of view, but doing it was much tougher than agreeing to it. Ever since he had calmed down and made up his mind not to be a playboy anymore, he had been strict with himself. He had never had any improper relationships with other women except Zoe, but Shelley had broken his vow. The more Knox thought about it, the angrier he got. You can think about it. I'm hanging up. Finn was not someone who liked to talk nonsense. Finn, if you could analyze your relationship like how you analyze others' relationships, you would not have ended up like that dash. Finn immediately hung up. Knox rolled his eyes in response. Seeing how bad of a personality Finn had, he found it no surprise that Monica was still rejecting Finn. When Knox put down his phone, Zoe came out of the bathroom after a shower. Zoe, as usual, was intimate with him. Knox, did you drink the tea? Zoe smiled. Knox did not even dare to look Zoe in the eye as he felt very guilty. His eyes flickered. I'm going to get changed and go to work. Since you were drunk last night, you should stay at home and get some rest. Are you going to work today? Zoe was a little disappointed. She was obviously reluctant to part with him, and Knox felt even more guilty when he saw Zoe's expression. He had thought it through. After he dealt with Shelley, he would confess everything to Zoe. If she really could not accept it, he would respect her choice. With that thought in mind, Knox seemed to calm down a little. I have something to deal with at the company today, so I'll be leaving first. All right. Zoe nodded obediently. In front of him, she had always presented herself as an obedient girl. However, when she saw Knox going to the closet to get changed, she smiled evilly. Knox should be feeling extremely sorry for her now. Actually, she did feel a little uncomfortable last night. Last night, Cody had placed a miniature camera in the private room. Under the dim lighting of the nightclub, ordinary people would not be able to discover it. Then, they left on purpose after Knox's drug took effect, leaving only the waitress and Knox in the room. Under the effects of the drugs, Knox would definitely go crazy. The effect of the drug was so strong anyone would turn horny at anything they saw. As expected, Knox could not control himself. Zoe, on the other hand, was watching from the outside the entire time. At first, it was fine as she forced herself not to care and told herself that it was to protect herself. However, as she watched, she started to feel upset. She amused that Knox was very skilled in bed, but what she was unhappy about was the way Knox looked at the waitress. There was a feeling of urgency and lack of control it was as if he had been holding it in for a very, very long time. She could not wait for it to end. Although she knew he had been drugged, it made her feel like Knox could have a good or even a better time with other women. Knox and the waiter did it many times until she could not stand it anymore. No matter how strong the medicinal properties were, was it so strong that they have to do it five times? How much did Knox want to sleep with another woman? She was really worried that Knox's nature would be reignited and he would start to get entangled with countless women again. Fortunately, when she saw Knox that morning, he seemed to have returned to his original state. Moreover, his guilt toward her was obvious. What she saw last night was probably an illusion. He was just controlled by the drug and was acting instinctively. There was nothing else. By the time Knox changed and came out, Zoe had brought the tea to Knox, who looked at her. Knox, drink some. You'll feel better. Zoe had always been sensible. The more gentle and considerate she was, the more Knox felt sorry for her. He drank the tea, and just as he was about to pass the cup to Zoe, she suddenly stood on tiptoe, hugged his neck, and kissed him. Knox was stunned. It was normal for him to be intimate with Zoe. However, at that moment, 
he suddenly did not know how to react to her kiss and stood there stiffly. When Zoe took the initiative to stick her tongue in, the scene of him going crazy with Shelley last night popped up in Knox's mind. After waking up, he started to piece it together bit by bit and finally figured out the whole thing. However, he could not remember how Shelley felt at that time. All he knew was that last night, he went really crazy, and it had never happened before. What drug did Shelley drug him with? Knox? Zoe called out to him. At that moment, her lips had left his, and Knox came back to his senses. What are you thinking about? Zoe was a little unhappy. In the past, when she took the initiative to kiss Knox, Knox would respond enthusiastically. Yet today, he was not reacting to her at all. Where was his mind wandering to? Were her kissing skills that bad? The men who had slept with her said she was very skilled and that her kiss made them feel good. Under normal circumstances, she would not take the initiative to cater to others, but when she kissed Knox just now, she had used all her skills. Her goal was to let Knox know that kissing her was the best and that he did not have to be hung up on other women. When she thought about how Knox kissed the waitress so hard last night that the girl almost suffocated or how he rubbed the waiter into his body, she was the one who had planned it, but she was so jealous that she could go crazy. I drank too much last night, so my thoughts are scattered, Knox explained reluctantly. It was also because his mind was filled with Shelley that he felt a little annoyed. In that case, don't go to work. Rest at home, and I'll accompany you. I'll be fine after I go out and get some fresh air. Knox refused. Zoe still had something to say, but Knox immediately walked out, not wanting to waste any more time. Zoe stared at Knox's back and stomped her feet angrily. She would never let Knox escape from her grasp. At night, at the nightclub, Shelley changed into her work clothes and went to work. She was actually considering whether she should resign from that job. Not to mention what she experienced yesterday, but the job did take up a lot of her time and she felt sorry for Bella. Today, she accompanied Bella to the hospital for a checkup. Bella's dependence on her made her feel bad. She really was spending too little time with Bella. While she was deep in her thoughts, the supervisor walked over. Shelley, room 999. Aren't I serving rooms 666 to 888 today? Shelley remembered that was the schedule. Room 999 needs someone. Just go over, and I'll sort out the rest. Shelley did not say anything else. In any case, the leader had the final say. With that, she went to room 999. Thinking that there would be a lot of people in the room, she pushed open the door of the private room but only saw Knox sitting alone inside with his legs crossed. The lights were bright, and he was sitting like a boss. Shelley turned around and left. In an instant, she could tell that Knox had specially come to look for her, and he was definitely up to no good. He definitely would not pity her for what happened last night either, so there was no need for her to stay and make herself suffer. Shelley, if you dare to leave, don't even think about working here. Knox threatened her. Shelley gritted her teeth. She knew Knox would not let her off easily. However, since she could not make up her mind, Knox could help her with making the decision. Shelley, Seeing that Shelley was not threatened by him, Knox was so angry that he was about to explode. He had wanted to embarrass Shelley today, but he did not expect to be humiliated by her again. He suddenly stood up from the sofa, grabbed Shelley's arm at an astonishing speed, and rudely brought her into the private room. Shelley did not resist. After what happened last night, she knew very well that she could not resist Knox's brute force, so why should she get herself hurt? At this moment, Knox's grip on her arm was really strong, and she was in pain. However, Knox was so angry that he did not notice his strength at all. At the thought of Shelley giving him a hard time, he really wanted to strangle her. However, when he grabbed Shelley's arm, he felt a little disgusted. When had Shelley become so thin? In his memory, Shelley was still that chubby woman. Yet now, in order to look good, she was willing to do anything. Knox dragged Shelley into the private room and let go of her arm angrily. Shelley did not leave either. Anyway, she could not escape. At most, she would just take it as if the dog in front of him had gone crazy. Eat this first, Knox ordered. Shelley glanced at the medicine and a glass of water on the coffee table. Why? You want to marry me by having my son? Knox raised his eyebrows. Shelley sneered. Then, she picked up the pill in front of her and swallowed it without hesitation. Even though she had taken a birth control pill early in the morning, she would never bear Knox's child in her entire life. Knox felt a little displeased when he saw that Shelley did not hesitate. He was ready for Shelley to find an excuse not to eat the pill, but he did not expect her to eat it in one bite. 
He felt like something was stuck in his throat, making him panic. Anything else? Shelly asked him after she ate the pill. Knox's throat moved, and he said, Tell me, what do you want for setting me up last night? Did Knox think that she drugged him last night? It really proved how stupid Knox was. Shelly, what's with the smile on your face? Knox was furious again. Was she mocking him? What right did she have to laugh at him? Do you feel a great sense of accomplishment because you managed to set me up in bed again? Do you feel good that you fooled me? Knox was furious. Knox, did I force you to sleep with me last time? Shelly suddenly asked him. Knox was stunned. Last time, when his legs had yet recovered and Shelly was taking care of him, they had slept together once. He admitted that he had drunk a little that time. He remembered he had told the boy who liked Shelly to pursue Shelly and had even given him financial assistance. He had thought that if Shelly fell in love with someone else, he could openly break off the engagement with her. During that period of time, that boy was indeed very close to Shelly, and Knox had also arranged for his men to follow the two of them. Once, his men gave him a few photos of the boy kissing Shelly, but how did he feel at that time? He felt that Shelly was just like any other girl. She said she liked him and wanted to marry him, yet she still could not resist the temptation of others, and cheated on him. Even though he had planned everything, he was still so angry that night that he lost his mind. Therefore, he drank some wine to make himself feel better. He did not know why he wanted to get over it. Anyway, he did not want to dwell too much on Shelley's matter, so he decided to pass the time with alcohol. In fact, he was not drunk, but tipsy. Once he was tipsy, it was easy for him to lose control of himself. That night, when Shelley helped him shower, sleep, and massaged his legs as usual, he had sex with her. After having sex with her, he regretted it so much that he wanted to bang his head against the wall. Why did he sleep with Shelley? He did not even dare to think about the scene of him sleeping with her because it was simply humiliating. Shelley, on the other hand, was very calm about it. I'll tell Grandpa Winter. No way. Once she told his grandfather, he would really have to marry Shelley, and he could never marry her. For some reason, there was a voice telling him that he absolutely could not marry her. As such, before Shelley informed his family, he gave the photo of Shelley kissing the boy to his family. He said that Shelley was an indecent woman who slept with him and was entangled with other men. That way, even if he slept with Shelley, his family would not force him to marry her. The day he gave his family the photo, Knox's mother came to look for Shelley alone. He did not know what they talked about, but when Knox's mother left, she looked a little helpless. Knox understood the look in his mum's eyes, that she felt helpless that he and Shelley could not get married. Due to what he did, he thought Shelley would cause a scene with him. After all, he was a little too petty, so he thought he would let Shelley do whatever she wanted in front of him. However, Shelley did not react to the situation at all and was studying hard. She treated him the way she usually would, and he actually could not stand it. Did Shelley not want to marry him? Now that she could not get married, was she not going to react? Did she feel ashamed? Shelley was not that thin-skinned. However, Knox was not the kind of person who would care about someone he did not care about. Since Shelley felt ashamed, he did not need to waste time on her. Later, Knox's legs were recovering well as the days went by. Soon, he could stand up and walk on his own. Anyway, Knox was having his own fun for a long time, and he drifted further and further away from Shelley. After all, his leg had recovered, so he did not need Shelley to help him with anything. During that time, Shelley was also busy preparing for the college entrance examination. Although the two of them lived under the same roof, it was rare for them to meet. When he had cut Shelley off, he fell in love with Zoe at first sight and decided to be with her. At that time, Shelley was still preparing for her college entrance examination. Two days before the college entrance examination, the school was on holiday, so all the students were allowed to go home and relax for two days before preparing for the exam. That day, Knox waited for Shelley at home. He said, Shelley, my one-year agreement with my family is almost over. After your college entrance examination, move out of my place. Shelley looked at him but did not agree. Knox, who had never been patient with Shelley, said, Why? Do you still think we can be together? Yes, we slept together, and I admit that, but I've slept with too many women. Do I have to be responsible for every one of them? Am I the same as all the women you've slept with? Do you think you're superior? I didn't sell my body to you, Shelley said bluntly. She knew that all of Knox's women were bought with money. Why? Do you want money? Knox asked her. In fact, he knew that Shelley wanted to marry him for money. 
Otherwise, any woman with such little self-esteem would have given up long ago after he rejected her. That's not what I meant. Shelley shook her head. Knox sneered. He could not help but be surprised by Shelley's coldness. I'm just telling you that I'm a little different from your other women, Shelley murmured. It was as if she was saying it to herself, and Knox naturally did not take it to heart. Shelley continued, Do you like Zoe? Knox frowned. How did she know? He had not announced it to the public yet. Did she follow him? Or did she peek at his phone? Your mother told me. Shelley did not need to think to know how Knox was maliciously speculating about how she knew. That morning, Knox's mother called her and told her about it. However, it was not to make her sad. It was to tell her that Knox really had someone he liked and that she should be prepared so that she would not be sad. Actually, what else could she be sad about? Ever since Knox brought back the photo of her kissing another boy and showed it to his family, she had nothing to be sad about. With Knox, she finally understood what it meant to have a cold, dead heart. Of course, she did not love Knox that much, but she was still hurt by his actions. You said you like her and want to marry her? Shelley asked. Yes, Knox admitted. When I saw her, I thought she was the best candidate to be my wife. When I saw her, I even thought of a name for our child. I've already thought of the child's name. Shelley smiled faintly. It was just a facial expression and did not mean anything. So, after the college entrance examination, you can move out of here. I told my parents and grandfather that you can go back to the Winters residence. Other than you not marrying me, your life in the Winters will be the same as before. Don't I disgust you? Shelley asked her. Was he not unhappy that she would be living with the Winters? Of course, but I can't chase you away. If I do this, my grandfather will beat me to death. Knox spoke bluntly. I'll leave by myself, Shelley suddenly said. Knox looked straight at Shelley and thought she was joking with him. Did she say she would leave by herself? Leave the winters? Did she know that a woman from the countryside like her would never be able to enjoy the glory and wealth of the winters once she left the family? I came to the winters to marry you. Now that it's useless, I should leave, Shelley said calmly. It was as if she had already thought about it. Suit yourself. Knox did not care at all. He even thought that Shelley was playing the emotional card on purpose. Unfortunately, he did not have any sympathy for her. I'm going to revise. Shelley turned around and left. After the two of them talked, she was not reluctant to leave. Knox naturally was all right with seeing her leave. In fact, he felt good about getting rid of Shelley so easily as he originally thought that Shelley would pester him. It was rare for Shelley to think so clearly, and his impression of her had also improved a little. After two days, that impression he had of her disappeared because Shelley got in a car accident on the day of the college entrance examination. When Knox received the news, he was shocked. He had a feeling that a woman like Shelley could live for many years, so how could she be met with a car accident? He even heard that it was very serious. He wanted to go straight to the hospital, but his friend reminded him otherwise. His friend said, why, out of all days, did Shelley get into a car accident today? Knox, don't you think she's deliberately using a ruse to stop you from being with Zoe so that the Winters would have no choice but to make you take responsibility for her? Knox instantly realized that that might be possible. After all, he believed Shelley was capable of anything. She could watch him sleep with other women, watch indecent videos to learn skills, and even seduce him when she was taking care of him. He even found the conversation they had two days ago a little strange because there was no way Shelley could accept it so calmly. Now that he thought about it, it was indeed a big game of chess. Shelley was so young. Why was her mind so complicated? Did she think that by doing that on purpose, he would do as she wished? He would never fall for her trick. After Shelley's car accident, he had not visited her even once. He pretended not to hear or see the calls and messages from his grandfather and parents. In any case, he definitely would not let Shelley scheme against him. It was not easy for him to want to get married, and he could not let Shelley ruin it. Due to Knox's firm and stubborn attitude, his grandfather whipped him ruthlessly. He was beaten until his flesh split open, and he almost died on the bed. Naturally, it pained his mother to see him like that. In fact, his mother was the first person to compromise and accept that he would not be with Shelley. Now that she saw that he was beaten up so badly, she gave up on matchmaking him and Shelley. She even called Shelley in front of Knox. Knox did not want to hear Shelley's voice at all. When he thought about how Shelley had set up that trap and made him suffer so much, he gritted his teeth and hated that woman to his core. Knox, Shelley called his name over the phone. Are you satisfied, Shelley? Knox sneered. 
His grandfather was still forcing him to go to the hospital to see her, but he went on a hunger strike to protest. He would not submit even if he died. I'll explain it to Grandpa Winter, Shelley said on the other end of the phone. Knox's mother had told her to convince Knox to eat something. She said that Knox was on a hunger strike at home and was also seriously injured. Hence, she was worried that his body could not take it. When Shelley heard the news, she found it a little funny. However, she felt more disappointed. It was just a car accident, yet he was not willing to even visit her. Do you think I'll believe you? Knox asked her coldly. It's not worth torturing yourself for me. Knox was stunned. At that moment, he thought that he was a little stupid. Why was he living like that because of Shelley? Shelley, what do I have to do to make you leave me? Knox could not suppress his anger anymore. Shelley hesitated before she said, Why don't you give me a breakup fee? Knox thought he had misheard Shelley asking him for the breakup fee. This way, we will have nothing to do with each other anymore. All right. Knox was more afraid that Shelley would go back on her word, so he said, Take my money and don't appear in front of me again. It would be best if they did not see each other ever again. All right. Shelley agreed. If he thought it was fine, that would be great. Knox gave Shelley $200,000, which to Shelley, who was still studying at the time, was a huge sum of money. Therefore, he believed it was enough for Shelley to go to university. In his mind, Shelley would definitely take the college entrance examination again and go to university. However, he did not expect Shelley to take his money and go for plastic surgery. Did she think she could charm anyone because she had plastic surgery? He, Knox, hated people who went under the knife the most in his life because no matter what, it would affect the next generation. After that showdown with Shelley, she did not appear in front of him again. There was a short period of time when he felt a little guilty, wondering if he had misunderstood Shelley back then. Perhaps her car accident was an accident, and he had thought too badly of Shelley. However, because Shelley did not appear in his life again, even if he did feel a little guilty, he gradually forgot about it as time passed. That was until now, when he finally bumped Shelley again. After disappearing for a few years, she was now trying to seduce him again, and her skills this time were higher than the last. That woman, Shelley, was getting increasingly disgusting. He pulled himself back to reality and looked at Shelley coldly. Shelley could tell what he was thinking from his eyes. Anyway, in Knox's heart, she was a bad person. In fact, she did not know why Knox looked down on her so much. Thinking about it carefully, it was probably because she insisted on marrying Knox even after pursuing Knox for a period of time and Knox had made it very clear that he would not be with her. Could she say that she regretted it too? Back then, she wanted to marry into the Winter family. Although she knew that Knox did not like her and even hated her, she did not care and thought that marrying into the Winter family would give her glory and wealth. Now, she really regretted it. Yes, I was the one who drugged you because I wanted to seduce you. I was still eyeing the position of the winter's eldest young mistress, Shelley suddenly admitted. In any case, even if she did not admit it, Knox would have thought the same. It was better to do as he wished and send him away as soon as possible. It would save her the trouble of dealing with him. Knox's expression changed when he heard Shelley's sudden admission. She had denied it at first, but now she suddenly admitted it. That woman. Was she compromising because she thinks she could not fool him? He found it odd but did not want to think too much about it. So, what does young Master Winter intend to do to me? Shelley asked him. Knox even felt provoked at that moment and secretly cursed in his heart. F asterisk CK. She had done such a terrible thing, yet she could still act so righteously. Did she have no sense of shame? Shelley, where did you get the confidence to say such things? Knox was furious. He could feel a ball of raging fire in his stomach but could not find a suitable time to vent it. Where did Shelley learn those despicable tricks over the years? Didn't you want me to say this, young Master Winter? Didn't you want me to admit I'm dirty and disgusting? Didn't you want me to make you think that not marrying me was the best choice you made? Shelley sneered. Knox could explode at any moment. I don't need you to admit anything. You're not worthy of being my wife. Everyone knows that. Since that's the case, what do you want from me? Why did you come looking for me? You could have ignored me. After all, the best way to stop me from marrying you is to treat me coldly. As long as you ignore me, even if I want to marry you again, I can only watch helplessly and achieve nothing. If I didn't come, do you think my grandfather would let me off if you got pregnant? Knox sneered. Shelley, do you think I'm stupid? Didn't I take the medicine in front of you? Knox was rendered speechless by Shelley's words. Young Master Winter, do you still think that's not enough? 
since there's a first time, it'll happen many more times. If I don't make it clear to you this time, you'll treat me like this again, and I don't have that much time to waste with you. When I think about having sex with you, I feel all kinds of disgusted, Knox said fiercely. It seemed like he could never tolerate Shelley. The more unpleasant his words were and the more they could agitate Shelley, the more he wanted to say them. Though, he had never treated anyone like that in his life. Shelley remained calm when she heard Knox's words. After all, she and Knox had been at odds for so many years, and it was rare for them to reach an agreement on that matter. She said, why don't you continue to give me a sum of money to get rid of me? Shelley, money is your real goal, huh? Knox asked. Shelley should know very well that he would never marry her, and that was why her biggest goal was to get money from him. For the sake of money, Shelley was willing to do anything. Yes, Shelley admitted. It was as if she said yes to everything he said about her, like she just wanted to get rid of him. Knox gritted his teeth. How much? In his opinion, anything that could be solved with money was never a problem. Fifty thousand dollars. Shelley was asking for an exorbitant price. Knox smiled. It was obvious from his face that he was mocking her. He said, do you still think you're the Shelley from back then? Back then, Shelley was considered a member of the Winters, but the current Shelley was nothing. However, Shelley thought that since Knox wanted to get rid of her with money, why did she not ask for more? She was short of money anyway, and money was nothing to Knox. Last night, we did a total of five times, and it's $10,000 each. To others, it might be an astronomical price, but to you, it's nothing, Shelley said bluntly, as if she was still negotiating seriously. Do you think that I'm a sucker just because I have a lot of money? Shelley, let alone $50,000, even $5,000 is too much. Didn't you come to me today because you were afraid I would tell Zoe about what happened yesterday? I'm not worth $50,000, but Zoe should be. Shelley raised her eyebrows. Knox's eyes narrowed. Shelley was never stupid. So, $50,000 is not much. Knox seemed hesitant. After sending Shelley away, he naturally had to confess to Zoe, so he was not threatened by Shelley. Yet now, he said coldly, what if you still say it? I, Shelley, swear on my life that I will not say it. Shelley swore. Knox was stunned as he did not expect Shelley to be so extreme. All right. Knox did not want to waste any more time with Shelley. $50,000 was not worth it for Shelley, but to him, it was not much at all. He said, give me your account number. I'll get someone to transfer the money to you tomorrow. All right. Shelley nodded. She did not know what to feel about earning $50,000 in one night. No matter what, she believed she had profited. After all, her body was just a worldly possession. After a while, she would forget about what happened. But I have a condition, Knox said bluntly. Tell me. Apart from the fact that you can't say anything about it, you should resign from your job here immediately. I don't want to see you in a place like this again. All right. She was about to resign anyway. Although the salary was considerable, in the end, it took up a lot of her time, which was not suitable for her. Now that she had such a huge sum of money, she did not need to work so much and could treat Bella's medical condition now. Don't play games with me. I just swore an oath, Shelley said bluntly. I'll trust you one more time. In that case, I'll be leaving. I don't want to be an eyesore to you, young Master Winter. Shelley even nodded to Knox. She was so respectful that Knox wondered whether Shelley treated all her sugar daddies like that. However, he really could not understand Shelley's thoughts. Could she not stay in the winters? Why did she have to live such an unsightly life? Knox did not call for Shelley anymore since he believed the matter had been resolved. All he needed to do now was confess to Zoe. Then, he would wait for her answer and respect her choice. With that thought in mind, Knox picked up the glass of wine and drank some. Even though he understood what he was supposed to do, he felt a little troubled. After all, he did not even know if he would be accepted or rejected. He drank a few glasses by himself but found it meaningless. Hence, he got up and left the nightclub. When he was in the car, it was raining cats and dogs. Accompanied by a few thunderclaps, it made the night seem a little scary. There was a traffic light in front of him, and Knox looked out of the car window, at the bean-sized raindrops falling on the street. Then, his eyes paused when he saw a woman suddenly running to a bus stop. Her entire body was drenched, and she looked miserable. Considering it was still early, buses were still operating in the city, so Shelley did not want to take a taxi to leave. Although Knox had given her a sum of money and she did not have to be so thrifty, she had not gotten it yet. Who knew if Knox would suddenly go back on his word? 
With a man like Knox, she did not dare to have any expectations for him. Otherwise, she was afraid she would be angered to death. She wrung the water off the clothes on her body. Since it was summer, she did not wear much to begin with, and after changing out of her work clothes, she wore a white dress. It was simple, elegant, and cheap. At that moment, because of the rain, her clothes were all stuck to her body. They were white and extremely transparent, making her pink bra under her visible. However, she was not alone at the bus stop. After all, in this world, the poor still made up the majority. She did not notice that she was being watched by the other two men at the bus stop, who did not expect to enjoy such a view at night. Her clothes were so transparent that they could almost make out the contours of her body. As the two men stared at her intently, the car that was leaving suddenly made a sharp turn and stopped in front of the bus stop. Rainwater splashed all over the ground. Shelley frowned, wondering who it was. It was raining so heavily, yet he had to drive so fast before he braked so abruptly. Did he have a death wish? The moment the back door opened and she saw Knox, she was calm. It was not easy for a person like Knox to survive until now. His family said he was prone to bloodshed, but why was he still alive after so many years? She knew that her thoughts were vicious, but she felt inexplicably good about it. At that moment, she suddenly felt a pain in her arm as Knox dragged her into his car. Knox's brute force frightened Shelley. She knew she could not have any expectations for Knox. It had only been a short while, and he was already going back on his word. Most importantly, she had already resigned. Whatever. She was planning to resign anyway, so it had nothing to do with Knox. While she comforted herself, Knox suddenly roared, Do you think you're good-looking, Shelley? Shelley turned her head to look out of the car window and ignored him. Shelley? No. Shelley answered, her voice a little loud. If you don't think so, why are you trying to seduce those men? Don't you have any self-awareness? Who did she seduce? Was Knox delusional? Or was he deliberately finding fault with her because he did not want to give her the $50,000? Look at what you're wearing. Knox looked at her clothes. Even in the dark, he could see through what she was wearing. When they were at the traffic lights, he glanced at Shelley. As the bus stop had lights, he could see at a glance how transparent her clothes were and how the man beside her was staring at her. However, she was completely unaware of it, or, she did it on purpose. In any case, he was pissed off. How shameless was Shelley? What the hell had she become over the years? Shelley lowered her head, baffled as to why Knox was scolding her. However, she could not see it because it was dark. Suddenly, Knox turned on the lights in the car. With the lights switched on, Shelley saw the condition of her clothes and immediately noticed the pink from her undergarments. At that moment, she was a little embarrassed. She had forgotten that the quality of the clothes she bought was not great. When it was wet, it looked no different from her not wearing any clothes. Shelley reached out and turned off the lights in the car. Knox laughed sarcastically. Why are you still pretending to be innocent? Weren't you quite confident when you were standing on the street just now? Knox's words were sometimes unpleasant to the ear, but Shelley endured it. After all, she did not have the courage to get out of Knox's car and hail a cab herself. Next time, she had to remember to bring an umbrella out with her. Shelley thought to herself silently and heard Knox ask her coldly, Where do you live? Shelley told him the address. She had tacitly agreed that Knox would send her back. After Knox heard the address, he mocked her again. Shelley, you're really not a simple person. You must have been with a lot of men to be able to afford a house there. It was indeed a wealthy district because it was Sarah's apartment. However, Shelley kept quiet. Did a man give it to you? Knox asked. Shelley still did not answer. You have the guts to do it but not admit it, huh? Knox, don't you think you seem jealous? Shelley retorted. Knox almost choked out of anger. What did she say? He was jealous? Stop the car. Knox suddenly shouted at the driver. Shocked, the driver quickly parked the car by the side of the road. It was the same just now. He had just passed the traffic light when young Master Winter ordered him to turn around immediately. Young Master Winter's face was so grim that he did not even dare to breathe. The moment the car stopped, Knox said coldly, get lost. Shelley pursed her lips. She did not mean that Knox was jealous. All she wanted was to shut him up, but she did not expect to provoke him again. Get down. Knox's voice was loud, and his disgust toward Shelley was obvious. Shelley took a deep breath before she opened the car door and got out. Outside the car, it was still raining cats and dogs, so Shelley was instantly drenched when she got out. At that moment, she felt like she had brought it upon herself. As soon as she got out of the car, 
the black car in front of her dashed off, and the water splashed all over her. In that situation, Shelley naturally would not wait for the bus anymore. Hence, she stood in the rain and finally managed to hail a taxi. Unbeknownst to her, as soon as she left, the black car drove back. However, Shelley was already gone by then, and Knox's expression was extremely ugly. The driver felt that he was innocent. He had lost count of how many times young Master Winter had yelled at him that night. Anyone with a weaker heart would be scared to death by his anger. Shelley caught a cold and had a fever. When she returned home last night, she took a hot shower and took cold medicine in time. However, she was still sick when she woke up early in the morning. Her body felt weak, and her head felt light. Therefore, she called her part-time job early in the morning to call in sick. Then, at 8 a.m. in the morning, she got up with Bella and sent her to kindergarten. She finally realized that the poor had no time to be sick because even though she was sick, she had to do what she had to do. She looked a little weak with her face red and her lips pale. Even the little Bella had noticed it. She said, Mom, are you sick? No, I just don't feel well, but I'll be fine in a while. Moi. Bella suddenly planted a kiss on her burning forehead. Shelley was stunned. That's what you always do to me when I'm not feeling well. Shelley smiled and stroked Bella's hair. Back then, she had chosen to keep Bella. Although she did regret it later since she would have lived a better life without Bella, she was glad that she had decided to keep Bella now. Otherwise, how could she experience the joy and happiness brought by such a cute creature like her daughter? Shelley quickly washed up with Bella. When she walked out of the room, Sarah had also just gotten up. Sigh. I will never drink so much again. The hangover is terrible. Don't you have to go to work today? Shelley asked Sarah as she went to the kitchen to make breakfast. I've called in sick. In that case, sleep a little longer. My head hurts. I'll make some breakfast for you. Thank you. I knew you loved me the most. Shelley smiled faintly. She quickly made breakfast for Bella, who obediently ate by herself. Even though she was not even three years old, she knew how to take care of herself. While Shelley was making breakfast for Sarah in the open kitchen, she said, Sarah, I've quit my job at the nightclub. You finally thought it through. Yes. Shelley nodded. I think the hours are too long, and it's not for me. It is. Now that Bella is a little older, she will need you to be around more. Yes. Shelley, how much more do we need for Bella's medical fees? Sarah asked. In fact, she had asked that question several times. Sarah probably wanted to help her, but she rejected Sarah every time. Sometimes, Shelley was so stubborn that she refused to accept it. It was not because she did not want to accept it, but because she knew she could not afford it so she did not want to owe Sarah anything. Not bad, if everything goes well. What do you mean? Sarah was dumbfounded. Shelley did not explain. She just turned the stove down the medium heat and said to Sarah, in about five minutes, you can turn off the stove and eat it. I'll send Bella to kindergarten. Sarah was also suffering from a terrible hangover, so she did not ask further. With that, Shelley left with Bella, whose kindergarten was just across the street from the neighborhood. Actually, there was also a high-end international kindergarten in the neighborhood, but the annual tuition fee was about the same as Bella's surgery fee. She and Bella chatted and laughed as they walked out of the neighborhood, not noticing that a black car was parked at the entrance and the man inside was staring at them. After sending Bella to kindergarten, Shelley returned. In front of Bella, she tried her best to look as energetic as possible when, in fact, her current body temperature should be about 39 to 5 degrees Celsius. Hence, she had to hurry home, take some fever medicine, and then get some sleep. With that thought in mind, Shelley tried to walk faster as she was afraid that she would faint if she was any slower. Just as she rushed into the entrance of the neighborhood, a man called her from behind, Shelley. Shelley really did not want to talk to Knox as her body was burning and shivering at the same time. Nevertheless, she still turned around. Anyway, he would not let her off if she did not pester him. I thought about it. Words mean nothing. Even if you swear on your life, how many oaths have you made? I don't trust you. In that case, what do you want me to do? Shelley tried her best to make herself look normal. However, Knox still noticed something different about her due to her overly rosy cheeks and her uncontrollable rapid breathing. Although he noticed, Knox said nothing. Instead, he said, I've written an agreement. If you tell anyone about what happened between us the night before last, you'll return me $50,000. All right. Shelley agreed readily. Knox handed the document to her, and Shelley took Knox's agreement document without even looking at it. Where's the pen? 
Shelly asked. I forgot to bring it. Shelly was speechless. Get in the car with me and go to the nearby convenience store to buy it, Knox said bluntly. Shelly really wanted to refuse. All she wanted was to go back to sleep, but she also wanted to put an end to that matter as soon as possible. Therefore, she braced herself and followed Knox into the car. There was no driver around today, so Knox drove himself. When Shelly instinctively wanted to sit in the back seat, Knox shouted at her. Do you think I'm a driver? She just thought that the passenger seat should be reserved for Zoe, but she did not argue with Knox and sat in the front passenger seat. Knox asked while driving, where's the nearest convenience store? It was a wealthy district, so how could there be convenience stores? There should be one on the opposite street. Shelley thought for a moment and said. Knox drove over and looked around until finally, he spotted a small shop selling stationery. From there, he bought a box of pens. Shelley signed her name on the spot. Once she was done, she handed the document to Knox and happened to accidentally touch his hand. Knox was visibly disgusted, but Shelley did not care. However, what he was concerned about was why Shelley's hand was so hot. On top of that, her face had turned redder. Do you have a fever? Knox asked. Shelley did not answer. Shelley. Yes, so will you give me an extra $10,000? Shelley looked at Knox. Knox sneered. That woman was really pushing her luck. Since you won't, it doesn't matter to you whether I have a fever or not. Shelley said, I've given you the agreement. If there's nothing else, I'll leave now. Shelley, whose child is it? Knox suddenly asked her. Shelley was stunned. The moment she saw Knox, she wondered when Knox had arrived and if he had seen Bella. However, there was no need to guess now. She said, it's not yours anyway. It's not yours anyway. Shelley enunciated each word. Knox looked at Shelley coldly. Shelley did not want to waste her breath on Knox, so she turned around and left. She was not feeling well now, and if she continued to argue with Knox, she was afraid that she would faint. However, she had only taken two steps when someone suddenly grabbed her arm. Shelley was on the verge of a breakdown. Just how annoying was a person to make someone have the urge to kill him? Therefore, the moment Knox pulled her back, Shelley used all her strength to push Knox. Behind Knox was a busy road. What he did not realize was that the moment Shelley pushed him onto the road, a car was coming toward him. However, the car suddenly braked and almost killed Knox. Knox's face turned red from anger. How vicious was Shelley to do that? The driver in the car was also shocked, and he shouted at Knox, Watch where you're going. Knox's expression was extremely ugly. However, Shelley looked on coldly before turning around and leaving. Seeing that, Knox was so angry that he almost fainted. He quickly walked toward Shelley, who could feel that Knox was about to burst out in anger. Just as she was prepared to be beaten up by Knox, the moment Knox really got close to her, her vision went black, and she fainted. She did not know whether she had fainted because her body was too weak or because she was scared out of his wits. In any case, she fainted, and she was glad that she collapsed at the critical moment. In a daze, she thought she saw Knox's panicked expression, but it was probably an illusion. After all, Knox had never been so kind to her, so he would not care whether she was dead or alive. When Shelley opened her eyes, she saw an unfamiliar ceiling, and it took her two seconds to react. She had fainted in front of Knox, so Knox should have been the one to send her to the hospital. It meant that she was in a hospital. She then looked around to see that Knox was not in the ward, but there was only a nurse standing guard at the side. Seeing that she had woken up, the nurse quickly went forward. Miss, your fever was at 40 degrees. Fortunately, you were sent to the hospital. Otherwise. Otherwise what? Humans did not seem to die so easily. Shelley forced a smile and said, Can you call the doctor for me? I want to ask when I can be discharged. All right. The nurse quickly agreed. Shelley looked at the four drip in her hand. She did not know how long she had been unconscious. Or rather than saying she was unconscious, she was actually sound asleep because she could feel that she had gotten a good rest and felt much better than before. Just then, the door of the ward was pushed open. Shelley was initially relaxed, but her expression changed the moment she saw Knox. Why was he still here? She even thought that Knox would not send her to the hospital and that perhaps some passerby had sent her here. In her mind, Knox was horrible to her. The doctor came in with Knox. Then, the doctor began to take her temperature. The fever has subsided a little, but it's still at 39 degrees. I suggest that you stay in the hospital for further observation. After this bag of four transfusion, we'll take a look at your situation again. If the fever doesn't subside, 
I would recommend you to stay in the hospital for two days, the doctor suggested. Shelley would never agree to such a suggestion. After all, Bella was still at home, and she had to pick Bella up after school in the afternoon. She casually picked up her phone and glanced at it. Fortunately, it was still early, and she could even stay in the hospital for a few more hours. Remember to stay hydrated, the doctor reminded her. Okay. Thank you, doctor. Shelley smiled politely. I'm going to prescribe some fever medicine for you and get the nurse to bring it over. Call me if you feel worse. The doctor was very polite to Shelley. Shelley smiled gratefully, while the doctor reported the situation to Knox before he left the ward. In the ward, Knox did not leave. He just sat beside Shelley's bed, which made her uncomfortable. If not for the fact that she was still on an four drip, she would have gotten up and left. However, she just endured it. She did not speak or show any expression. She did not even look at Knox. Why didn't you tell me you were having such a bad fever? Knox suddenly asked. His tone was unusually calm. Would you have let me go if I told you? Shelley raised her eyebrows. Knox's face darkened and he said coldly, Let you go? Are you going to let me go or am I going to let you go? Shelley, you've been scheming against me all along, and now you're complaining about me first? You almost pushed me onto the road and killed me just now. How dare you have the nerve to say I won't let you go? In that case, I'll let you go now. Can you leave? Shelley asked. Knox was so angry that he could explode. Shelley almost scared him to death just now. How could a person faint just like that? When he picked up the unconscious Shelley and went to the highway to stop a taxi, he completely forgot how dangerous that action was. If he was not careful, he might have been killed by a car. Fortunately, he managed to hail a car and rush to the hospital as fast as he could. After arriving at the hospital, the doctor did a checkup on her. The initial conclusion was that the high fever caused her to faint. However, the reason why she had been unconscious for so long was that she had fallen asleep. F asterisk CK. How dare she have the nerve to fall asleep when he was about to faint from anger? In fact, she had a very good sleep. Did that woman have no conscience? He gritted his teeth as he stayed with Shelley in the ward. The more he thought about it, the angrier he got when he saw her even breathing. He even wanted to drag that woman out of bed. How could she sleep so soundly while he was so scared that his soul almost left his body? As such, he left the ward angrily, not planning to care about Shelley anymore. However, when he walked out of the door, he hesitated again. It was not because he was reluctant to part with Shelley, but because of the little girl he saw that morning. Of course, he knew that it was not his. After all, he and Shelley had only slept together once, so how could they have a child together? It was impossible for a woman like Shelley to have his child. More importantly, Shelley got into a serious car accident after Shelley slept with him, so there was no way she kept the child. However, he was just curious as to whose child it was. He tried to guess the child's age. Shelley must have gotten pregnant not long after the car accident. At that thought, Knox was furious again. Shelley really could not keep her hands to herself for even half a minute before she hooked up with another man. No wonder she left the winters back then. It might be because she had found a sugar daddy, and now that she had been abandoned by her sugar daddy, she was too embarrassed to come back. That must be it. With that thought in mind, Knox called someone to verify it. He wanted to know who the man that got Shelley pregnant was. That was why he did not leave the hospital in the end. Moreover, he was unwilling to go to the ward, because seeing Shelley sleeping like a pig made him inexplicably angry. If the doctor had not come, he would not have followed the doctor into the ward. Once he entered the ward, he barely exchanged a few words with Shelley before he was angered to death again. Shelley, if not for me, you would have died out there. Is this how you treat your savior? Savior? How dare he have the cheek to say that he was her savior? If he had not kicked her out of the car and left her drenched on the street for so long yesterday, she would not have had such a fever. In fact, if Knox had not tormented her for the entire night the day before yesterday, causing her body to suffer some damage, her immune system would not be so weak. The point was, if Knox had not come to pester her today and made things difficult for her, she would not have fainted on the road. All of that was thanks to Knox, yet he had the nerve to say that he was her savior? As she looked at him sarcastically, Knox's face darkened. What did Shelley mean? Was she mocking him? Was that her attitude towards someone who had saved her life? He really had the urge to strangle Shelley. Shelley said, How about I devote myself to you? Shelley! Knox almost jumped up. How could Shelley be so shameless at a time like that? 
He said fiercely, if you really want to marry me, you'll do anything. Since you know that, why are you still approaching me? Are you deliberately giving me a chance to marry you? Knox was so angry that his face turned pale. It was true. If he continued to involve himself with Shelley, he would go crazy. With that, he stood up and left. On his way out, he slammed the door behind him angrily, and the door shook, indicating how angry he was. Shelley, on the other hand, was calm. After all, her goal was to provoke Knox. She did not want to waste any more time talking to the man, or she was afraid she would lose two years of her life in jail. Fuming, Knox walked out of the hospital. Just as he was at the entrance, his phone rang. Mr. Winter. Speak. Knox's tone was quite frightening. The person on the other end reported nervously, Ms. Carter's child is indeed not yours. At that moment, Knox felt as if his vision had gone dark. He was so angry that his eyes were red. He thought, so that's how shameless Shelley is, huh? Even though he kept telling himself that it was impossible for her child to have anything to do with him, when he knew the answer, it hit him really hard. Back then, when Shelley said she liked him and that she would not marry anyone but him, she was lying, right? His hand that was holding the phone was trembling. Miss Carter's child is I. Knox hung up the phone abruptly. Who Shelley's child belonged to had nothing to do with him, and he did not have to be concerned as to what kind of filthy life she was living now. Hence, he suddenly turned back into the hospital and pushed the door to the ward open. In fact, Shelley did not expect Knox to turn back and with such a murderous look on his face at that. How childish was the man to do irrational things. However, Shelley ignored Knox. Instead, she got up from the bed and wanted to go to the bathroom because she had to pee. Just as she was about to remove the drip and go to the toilet, Knox suddenly said, $2,000. Shelley did not know what was Knox up to. I spent $2,000 on the hospital fees. Pay me back. Knox said coldly. He felt that it was not worth it to estend a single cent on shelf. After sending Shelley to the hospital, he even took into account her financial situation and took the initiative to save $2,000 for her hospitalization fees. However, he wanted it all back now. Shelley fell silent after hearing what Knox said. $2,000 was too much for her. She had not even received the $50,000 that Knox was supposed to give her, and she had to pay him back, $2,000? She would rather be dead. Didn't you hear me? Knox roared. Are you deliberately looking for trouble? Shelley was relatively calm. $2,000 was nothing to Knox. Why did he come back to ask her for it? As a matter of fact, I think that spending a single cent on someone like you is a waste of my money. I didn't come to the hospital willingly, nor did I want to stay in such an expensive ward, Shelley retorted. You were the one who made all the decisions when I was unconscious, so it has nothing to do with me. Why should I pay? So you won't agree to it, will you? Knox gritted his teeth. No, Shelley said confidently. When it came to money, she would never compromise. All right. Knox nodded. I'll deduct it from your $50,000. No. Shelley refused. You can deduct $100 at most. Knox sneered. He found Shelley ridiculous. I'll only go to a cheap clinic when I'm sick. The expenses there are at most a few hundred dollars, and $100 is the limit. It meant that she was at a disadvantage, even though he had brought her to such an expensive hospital and such a top-notch ward. You can deduct $100. Shelley enunciated each word. Why should I listen to you? Knox sneered. In that case, why did you come back and ask me that? I just wanted to inform you. I'm leaving the hospital, Shelley suddenly said. Knox's eyes narrowed. Can I leave? Shelley asked Knox. Although it was a question, she was already removing the four drip from her hand. However, because the technique was incorrect, blood oozed out the moment she pulled it out. Knox's eyes widened. After Shelley took it off, she pressed it down hard with her hand. At that moment, she was so angry that she did not feel any pain. She did not even feel like peeing anymore. As Shelley walked out of the ward, Knox stopped her. Shelley! However, Shelley ignored him. Recently, Knox had felt powerless toward Shelley, who had been ignoring him as if she wanted to get rid of him. The more he had that misconception, the more he wanted to target Shelley. Hence, he went forward and slammed the door of Shelley's ward shut. When Shelley realized she was locked in, she was so angry that she could not care less about anything and slapped Knox hard on the face. Knox was stunned by Shelley's slap. He could not believe that Shelley had slapped him on the face. Did Shelley know that he had never been slapped by anyone in his life? Not even his grandfather had slapped him on the face, yet she did. For that, he wanted to strangle that woman to death, 
so he grabbed Shelly's neck. When Shelly felt a sharp pain in her throat, she knew that she had angered Knox. However, she also knew that if she did not resist, she would die in Knox's hands, and she could not die not for Knox, or she was afraid that she would not die in peace. As such, she started fighting with Knox crazily, with both her fists and legs. It looked very intense. Knox did not expect Shelly to go crazy, so he suddenly let go of her neck. No matter how angry he was, or even if he really wanted to kill her, he could not kill her. All he wanted was to scare her, but he did not expect the woman to go crazy, like she wanted to bring him down with her. There were many scratches on his body and face. Shelly, that's enough. Knox calmed down a little. Shelly, however, could not calm down. Enough? She wanted to vent all the grievances she had suffered from Knox in her entire life. Shelly, that's enough. If you don't calm down, I'll really kill you. Knox threatened. He did not even know how badly Shelly had scratched his body and face. Shelly could not hear what Knox was saying. All she wanted to do was kill him. She had really had enough of him constantly making her life miserable. Shelly. Knox gritted his teeth. He then wanted to grab Shelly's hands and shackle them together, but Shelly seemed to have expected it and dodged. The moment she dodged, Knox grabbed her clothes. With a strong tug, the buttons on her clothes were all pulled open, exposing Shelly's upper body. Once exposed, Knox froze when he saw the dense marks on Shelly's body. It was as terrifying as it could be, like she had been abused. Every part of her skin was covered in bruises. However, Shelly continued to go crazy as if she did not notice what had happened. Even when she could sense that the person opposite her was not reacting to her hitting and scratching him anymore, she gradually calmed down. When she calmed down, she saw that Knox's face and neck were covered in scratch marks, and his clothes were also wrinkled from her pulling. In any case, he looked like a mess. She bit her lip lightly. She did not know why she had lost control just now because she rarely lost control of herself. Suddenly, the two of them fell silent. After a fight, both of them seemed to have calmed down. Shelley said, you can deduct as much as you want. Actually, I didn't think you would give me money. She did not have much hope for Knox, so she would not be disappointed even if he did not give her the $50,000. This was left behind the night before yesterday? Knox asked while staring straight at her chest. Shelley lowered her head. Only then did she realize that her clothes had been torn apart. Just now, she was so angry that her heart was about to explode and did not notice anything. She quickly covered her body with her clothes. Do you feel guilty? Shelly mocked. Knox did not answer. If he did not feel guilty, would he have let her go on for so long? You should be thinking that I brought this on myself, right? That it serves me right for drugging and seducing you. Shelly did not need Knox to answer to know what he wanted to say. Knox's eyes narrowed. Don't worry, I know my limits. I never thought of getting your sympathy, and I won't threaten you. Shelly looked straight at Knox. My only request is that you stay away from me, okay? Don't give me any more hope. Don't give me the chance to set you up again. Just let me give up on you completely, okay? Knox knew that Shelly said that on purpose to stop him from bothering her. Was it because Shelly was too good at scheming or, did the night before have nothing to do with Shelly? Knox's silence made Shelly break down. She had said so much to preserve his ego and dignity while putting herself down. What else did he want? Shelly, tell me now. Was it you who drugged me that night? Knox suddenly asked her calmly. Shelly looked at Knox, who had suddenly become smarter. However, she was not so kind as to let him know the truth. She would let him and Zoe live forever. Zoe would give birth to three sons, but none of them would be his. Most importantly, they would all have different fathers and the daughter they had when they got older would be brown-skinned. The thought of Knox being cuckolded for the rest of his life made her very excited, and she said, Yes, I did. Knox's eyes narrowed. Shelly, I'm giving you a chance to prove your innocence. There's no need to prove myself. I did what I did. I don't need to prove it. Shelly decided to take all the blame. She was not doing it out of spite. Rather, she just wanted Knox to never find out the truth. She wanted him to live in a world of deception forever, until one day, he suddenly realized how many times he had been cuckolded. It would be best if he found out about it when he could no longer stir up trouble. Then, even if he wanted to take revenge, he could not. Shelly, let me ask you this again Dash. It's me. There's no need to ask. Shelly said calmly. Knox's expression was ugly, and the veins on his face were bulging from how angry he was. He even looked like he might strangle her again in the next second. 
however, in the next second, he opened the door and left angrily. Shelley could only pray that he did not come back after he left. As such, she quickly left the hospital as well. Considering Knox had been angry all day, who knew what he would do next? She even took a taxi back because she was afraid that Knox would catch her again while she was waiting for the bus, and she really wanted to avoid him. The moment Shelley sat in the taxi, she received a text message. When she opened it to take a look, she saw that tens of thousands of dollars had been transferred to her name. Shelley counted the zeros and realized it was $50,000. Knox had finally given her the money, and the medical fees had not been deducted. Shelley put down her phone. For some reason, she knew that Knox would never torture her again and she could peacefully accompany Bay Bay to treat her illness. Knox had told someone to transfer the money. From now on, if he was the one who went looking for Shelley or caring about her again, he would look down on himself. With that, Knox took out his phone and made a call. Knox? It was Zoe's sweet and soft voice. He must have gone mad to rather be tortured by Shelley than be with his fiancée. He even believed that if he spent a few more seconds with Shelley, he would lose two years of his life in jail. He asked, Where are you? I have something to tell you. I'm at home. Come over. Wait for me. All right. The other party nodded obediently. After that, Knox put down his phone. He had thought it through and decided that had to confess to Zoe. The taxi stopped at Zoe's luxurious apartment. The moment Zoe saw Knox, she was shocked, and her face turned pale. Knox, what happened to your face? Her concern for him was obvious, and she was worlds apart from Shelley, that selfish and heartless woman who only wanted him and even his money. And your neck. What happened to you? Zoe asked in shock. Tears were streaming down her face. I got into a fight with a woman. Who dares to fight with you and beat you up like this? Could it be your mom? No. It was an unimportant person, Knox said calmly. Zoe wanted to ask something else, but Knox interrupted her with a serious look on his face. I'm looking for you today because I have something important to tell you. Zoe instantly became serious. I cheated. Knox enunciated each word. Zoe's eyes flickered. She did not expect Knox to confess to her. In fact, she had planned to leave some evidence behind so that she could make a deal with Knox in the future. However, now that he had confessed, what was the point of her doing all that? What kind of stupid idea did Brandon come up with? The night before last, we were both drunk. Then, I was drugged and had sex with a woman. Knox said bluntly, I've already sent that woman away, and I guarantee that she won't affect our marriage. But I wonder if you'd still want to marry me? But I wonder if you'd still want to marry me? Knox asked Zoe. Zoe looked at Knox, speechless for a long time. Just like that, it was all ruined. Knox looked at Zoe's hesitant expression and did not rush her to a decision. If it were him, he would not be able to accept it either. In fact, he did not know whether he was expecting her forgiveness or something else, but suddenly, he did not feel like getting married anymore. At the same time, he thought it was a pity that they did not get married because they had been dating for so long. In short, it was all very confusing to him. The two of them were silent for a long time. Zoe, however, knew she had to marry Knox. Knox was the best of all the people she had dated and the person she really wanted to marry. If not for the fact that she was used to fooling around with other men and could not control herself, she would have married Knox long ago. She thought about it and said, Knox, I plan to forgive you. Knox looked at Zoe in a daze. There was no joy in his eyes. It was as if, it was not something to be happy about, but he did not reject her decision because it seemed logical. He probably thought that since they had been together for so long, there was no way Zoe would break up with him because of that matter. Since he had expected it, his lack of reaction was normal. Because I love you very much, I can't break up with you even if I want to, Zoe said uncomfortably. Knox was still a little touched by Zoe's kindness and tolerance for him. Since you just said that you were forced to do so, I'll pretend that this never happened. However, Knox, Zoe looked at him with tears in her eyes. Yes. Knox wiped Zoe's tears. It seemed like Zoe was the only person in his life that he could be gentle to. Can you promise me one thing? Zoe asked him. Tell me. In the future, if I do something wrong or offend you, will you forgive me like me? Zoe asked him. Knox nodded. Of course. He believed Zoe would not do anything to offend him. You can't go back on your word. Zoe was very serious. She thought that no matter what, she should first get herself a get-out-of-jail-free card. Hence, if Knox found out, she could still protect herself. All right. Knox nodded. He indulged Zoe endlessly. 
At that moment, he suddenly thought of Shelley, whom he was always impatient with. He figured it must be true love when he could tolerate the people he loved endlessly. To a woman he could never fall in love with, he would only be irritated and angry. No matter what, it was impossible for them to get along peacefully. Having received Knox's answer, Zoe threw herself into his arms. She then secretly make up her mind that she could never cheat on him again in the future. Knox was so serious about her. If he really found out that she was cheating on him, Knox would definitely kill her. Even if he could not bear to kill her, seeing that he was so good to her, she should also stop all her shenanigans for him. When Zoe left Knox's embrace, she said seriously, Knox, let's have a child after we get married. Knox was a little stunned. His reaction surprised Zoe. Don't you like children? Actually, she did not like children either. However, she felt that once she had a child, she might be able to stop being a playgirl. Moreover, if her previous acts were exposed, she could still rely on the child to survive. I do. Knox nodded his head. He suddenly thought about how old Shelley's daughter was. He could not believe that Shelley was so shameless to give birth to another man's child, and just thinking about it made him furious. In that case, let's have a child soon, okay? I want to have a child with you. Zoe hugged Knox's arm intimately and wheedled. All right. Knox smiled. He believed Shelley had had a great impact on his life during this period of time, so he had to do the same for her. As for Shelley, he had nothing to do with her anymore. In Bamboo Garden, Chloe had been here for three days, and in the past three days, she had not seen Edward at all. He always left early and returned late. Basically, when she woke up, Edward had already left and would only return after she had gone to bed. She did not come here to live under the same roof as Candace. Hence, early in the morning, Chloe secretly got out of bed. Since knew that. Edward would leave early every day, she had to fight for a chance for herself. With that thought in mind, she set her alarm clock for 6 a.m. in the morning. Then, she tiptoed out of bed because afraid of waking someone up and went downstairs to the kitchen. There was actually a kitchen on both sides, an open kitchen and a backyard kitchen. The open kitchen, which was not used as much, would be used to make snacks and drinks most of the time, while the actual kitchen was in the backyard. Chloe walked into the kitchen in the backyard and prepared to make breakfast for Edward. What did the saying go? To capture a man's heart, one must first capture his stomach. There was a time when she specially hired a chef to teach her how to make breakfast. Now that she had finally learned it, she had to put it to use. Just as she walked into the kitchen, she saw a figure in the kitchen and frowned. In her opinion, Teddy was up too early. He would only go to bed late every night, yet he was up again at 6 a.m. Chloe was annoyed. If she went in now, it would seem a little deliberate. Moreover, she could tell that Teddy treated Candace pretty well after spending a few days with her. If she were to do it instead of Teddy, Teddy would definitely overthink, and it would not be worth it if he ruined her plan. Chloe gritted her teeth. Just as she decided to leave, her eyes narrowed when she Teddy putting a small white pill from a box into the breakfast he was making. She did not think it was a tonic. If she remembered correctly, he would make Candace breakfast every day. At that moment, Chloe's heart raced, as if she had discovered a huge secret. Then, her body jerked, and she hid to the side when she saw Teddy taking out the breakfast from the kitchen. As Chloe was hiding at the side, Teddy did not notice her. After Teddy left, Chloe quickly ran into the kitchen and picked up the torn packaging from the trash can beside her. She nervously stuffed all the packaging into her pocket and left in a hurry, avoiding Teddy as she returned to her room. Once she shut the door, she took out the pieces of the packaging and began to piece it together bit by bit. As it was torn into pieces, Chloe wanted to give up several times. However, she believed that there must be something more to it, so she pieced it together patiently. It took her a long time for her to complete it, and she looked at the packaging that she had pieced together. On it was a string of words, but she was afraid that she had pieced it together wrongly, so she checked them on her phone again. Once she confirmed that the words on the box were emergency contraception pill, no side effects, her heart was racing. It meant that Teddy had been giving Candace emergency birth control pills. No, Teddy did not have the guts to make a move on the leader, so it must be Edward, who did not want Candace to bear his child. The thought of it excited Chloe. In that case, Edward's feelings for Candace were just that. They were not as loving and affectionate as they appeared on the surface. Perhaps Edward only treated Candace because of her father. Her father was highly respected in Harkin. Edward had just taken office, and his foundation was not strong enough yet. Hence, he must rely on her father, 
which was why he married Candace. In other words, Edward could have married either her or Candace, but since he was not around, he did not care. At that thought, Chloe was overjoyed. At first, she was still a little afraid because if Edward liked Candace so much, Edward might push her away if she tried to seduce him. However, now that she knew he did not like Candace at all, she did not have to worry about anything. Chloe crumpled the wrapping paper into a ball and placed it on the bedside table. She was not in the mood to go back to sleep, so after getting out of bed and washing up, she opened the door and went out. The moment she opened the door, she happened to see Paige walking barefoot to Candace's room to look for her. She hurriedly went over. Paige. She seemed very gentle and friendly. Having been living here for the past few days, she understood what was going on. Paige was a little tyrant whom everyone doted on, and Candace tried her best to please her. Since Candace treated Paige so well, it must be because Paige was very important to Edward. To know how to please a man, Candace was indeed not a simple woman. Paige stopped at the sound. When she saw Chloe, she called out obediently, Hi, aunt. Where are you going barefooted? Chloe walked in front of Paige and asked her gently. To find mommy, Paige answered honestly. Your mom is still sleeping. Why don't I bring you out to play? No, mom wants me to kiss her every day. Paige refused. Chloe felt a little embarrassed after being rejected so directly. Paige, do you want some ice cream? Chloe asked. Paige's big eyes were shining because she loved ice cream. Come with me downstairs. I'll buy you ice cream now, okay? Uh, before her mother and her favorite ice cream, she began to hesitate. Let your mom sleep a little longer. We'll go look for her after we've had ice cream, okay? Chloe tried to tempt her. Otherwise, if your mother finds out, she definitely won't let you eat it. Having been deceived by Chloe, Paige nodded and held Chloe's uninjured hand as they went downstairs together. Behind them, a half-closed door suddenly closed. George sat in his wheelchair and returned to his bed. How smart was Candace? She was actually stupid enough to invite a wolf into her house. Candace waited for a long time, but Paige did not wake her up. Surprised, she could not help but get out of bed and go straight to Paige's room to see if Paige had overslept or was sick. However, Paige was not in her room. The nanny who was taking care of Paige was tidying up the room. She looked at Candace and said respectfully, Madam. Where's Paige? Didn't Paige look for you first thing in the morning? No, she didn't. Candace was getting a little agitated. No, she's been out for a long time. I wanted to accompany her, but she said she wanted to look for you herself and didn't allow me to go with her. I. The nanny was also shocked. Candace tried her best to remain calm as she rushed downstairs. The moment she went downstairs, she saw Paige and Chloe sitting together on the sofa, happily eating ice cream. She held it in. The nanny was also following behind, and when she saw that Paige was home, she heaved a sigh of relief. Sis, you're up. Chloe called out to Candace warmly when she saw her, making it seem like they had a good relationship as sisters. Candace responded and walked toward them unhurriedly. Paige was also very excited to see Candace. Mom. Why are you eating ice cream so early in the morning? Candace was obviously displeased. Ah, uh, Paige lowered her head as if she had done something wrong. Sis, don't be so harsh on a little kid for having ice cream. Chloe deliberately pretended to be a good person. The most important thing is that you're happy. Isn't that right, Paige? As Chloe spoke, she became friendly with Paige. When Paige heard Candace's words, she quickly replied happily, Yeah, I'm happy too. Ice cream is the best thing in the world. I will take you out for more ice cream in the future, okay? Okay. I love you the most, aunt. If you love me, just give me a kiss. Chloe leaned over. Paige was not stingy and kissed Chloe's cheek. The two of them looked extremely intimate, and Candace just watched them. Eventually, Candace turned around and said as she left, Paige, when you're done with your ice cream, come over for breakfast. All right, Paige said in her soft and cute voice and nodded obediently. When Candace was at the dining table, Teddy placed Candace's breakfast in front of her as he did every morning, and Candace was already used to it. Teddy, keep an eye on Paige in the future. She shouldn't have ice cream so early in the morning. I tried to stop her, but second miss said I was being a busybody. Teddy was filled with anger. Come look for me next time. Second miss forbade me from looking for you. Candace's face darkened. You two sisters seem close, so I don't want to affect your relationship, Teddy explained. Teddy could not be blamed for thinking that way. Ever since Chloe moved in, Chloe's attitude toward her seemed to have changed. 
She was always calling her elder sister, making people think that the two sisters were close. I don't have a good relationship with her. Candace enunciated each word. Don't hide it from me next time. Yes. Teddy naturally stopped talking about Chloe. You can get busy with your work. Yes. With that, Teddy left, and Candace watched the interaction between Chloe and Paige. At that moment, Chloe also turned to look at Candace eating her breakfast. The corners of her mouth curled into a cold smile. Candace might not even know what she was eating. She thought it was Edward's love for her, but if she found out the truth, she might break down. Chloe really wanted to see that scene play out, but she told herself to be patient because now was still not the time. She would make Candace wish she was dead for stealing her man, status, and wealth. She wanted everything back. Aunt, I'm done. Paige's young voice called out to her. Chloe looked at Paige dotingly. I will take you to wash your mouth, okay? All right. Paige nodded obediently. Chloe held Paige's hand and left. Candace just watched from afar without any reaction. Are you jealous? Candace turned around and saw George, who rarely came downstairs. Usually, he would stay in the bedroom and never come out. However, Teddy seemed to have carried him down just now, and she did not notice. She had to admit that Chloe did make her a little, angry. First, she'll bribe Paige, me, and then my dad. George looked at Candace. The mistress of this place is about to change. Candace was speechless. George, don't you think you're a little too mature? Anyway, my dad changes women all the time. George said calmly, it's not much to change another one. George, are you worried about me? Candace grinned. Her smile was bright. George's face was a little red, and he was a little angry at that moment. Are you stupid? I'm mocking you. But why do I feel you're afraid your father will dump me? What am I afraid of? I can't wait for you to leave my house. Seeing you annoys me. In that case, why did you come downstairs to remind me of Chloe's motive? Candace raised her eyebrows. I I. I just want to see you make a fool of yourself. If you want to see me make a fool of myself, you can wait until I'm really made a fool of. By reminding me now, aren't you afraid that I'll really be made a fool? How can you be so thick-skinned? George gave up. He could never win against Candace. George, why are you so cute? Even when you're angry, you're cute. Candace suddenly bent down and pinched George's cheek. George's face was bright red. He thought, can this woman be more reserved? Did I allow you to touch my face? Not everyone can touch my face. However, although he was angry, he did not refuse. Candace pinched his face so hard that it was deformed. When Chloe came out with Paige, she saw the interaction between Candace and George. She had always thought that Candace and George were not on good terms. After all, George did not leave his room for the past few days, and even in his room, he ignored everyone who came. It made her think that George did not accept Candace either. Yet, when she saw the interaction between the two of them, Somehow, she felt that George was indulging Candace. It was not that she had never seen George before. George was a mature young man who did not smile, unlike now, when he was tortured by Candace but did not resist at all. George. Chloe took the initiative to call out to George. Candace then let go of George's little face. Although it was not as chubby as Paige's, it felt good to touch. She suddenly understood the happiness of a rich woman. Big brother. Paige was still very close to George. She quickly shook off Chloe's hand and ran toward George. George, who was sitting in the wheelchair, picked Paige up. The strength of his arm was too shocking. To think that a ten-year-old child could carry the chubby Paige, who weighed at least thirty pounds, so easily. It was as easy as plucking a carrot for George. Wow, George, you're so strong. Standing at the side, Chloe was starry-eyed. It was obvious that she wanted to please George. She knew very well that it was easy to please Paige as all she had to do was satisfy Paige's little needs. However, George was older, and it was difficult to please him. Therefore, once she had the opportunity, she had to think of a way to show herself. When George heard Chloe's voice, he placed Paige on his uninjured leg and said calmly, that's why it hurts to beat someone up. Chloe felt embarrassed. She could clearly feel George's unfriendliness toward her. If she had not seen the interaction between Candace and George, she would have thought that George was difficult to get along with. Now, it was clear that he was deliberately targeting her. She smiled, trying to give herself a way out. I didn't know you knew how to joke, George. I never joke. So, George looked at Chloe. Don't provoke me. How could I offend you? You're my sister's stepson. I can't even wait to curry favor with you, Chloe quickly said. That stepson seemed unintentional 
but it did not sound nice. Stepson? What stepson? Paige seemed to have heard an unfamiliar word, so she asked Chloe as she blinked. It's I. George glared at Chloe, and she swallowed the words that she was about to say. It felt like George was really going to beat her up. However, knowing that she could not afford to offend George, she endured it and smiled. You'll know when you grow up. Paige, however, was not satisfied with the answer. Paige, come to me. Candace picked Paige up. Paige obediently stayed in Candace's arms. Then, Candace hugged Paige with one hand and touched George with the other. It's time for breakfast. As she spoke, she carried Paige to the dining table, with George following behind them. When he walked past Chloe, he said, don't push your luck. Chloe shuddered. George was only ten years old. How could he have so much effect on someone? Just a glance and a sentence could make her subconsciously afraid. What made her even more unhappy was that George was actually siding with Candace. Should he not hate his stepmother? She had previously planned to use that relationship to rope in George, but it seemed like she had really underestimated Candace. At the dining table, everyone sat together. Paige, do you want me to feed you? Chloe started to put on an act again. Paige is three years old. She can eat on her own, George said bluntly. Paige was about to nod when she lowered her head and ate her food. At that, Candace could not help but laugh. Actually, when she saw Paige eating by herself, she wanted to feed her too. However, seeing how obedient Paige was, she thought she should listen to George. Chloe smiled awkwardly. George, you're such a good brother. Paige, you have to eat obediently. All right. Paige nodded. You should talk less when you're eating, said George. Or you'll seem uneducated. Chloe's embarrassed face turned red. George, this brat, is doing it on purpose, isn't he? Chloe's face darkened as she lowered her head to eat. She was so angry that her lungs were about to explode. Candace, on the other hand, was in a good mood. She wondered if George was having breakfast with them today to help her beat up the mistress. That little brat may say he hated her, but his actions spoke louder than words. After breakfast, Paige went to class. George did not go back to his room immediately. Instead, he suddenly said, I want to take a walk in the back garden. Do you need me to push you out? Candace asked. No, I want her to push me. George looked at Chloe. Chloe frowned, and her gut told her that George was up to no good. If you don't want to, forget it. George pushed the wheelchair and was about to walk out. It's not that I don't want to. I just thought you didn't like me, Chloe quickly said. I don't target people. George said, you're overthinking it. That's good. I was worried I might have offended you. I'll push you out for a walk immediately, Chloe said excitedly. One of her hands was injured, so she used the other hand to push George to the back garden with some difficulty. George, where do you want to go? Chloe asked gently. Let's go over there and take a look. George pointed in the direction of the pool. Chloe frowned. She was not stupid to know that George did not like her, and there must be something wrong for him to call her out at that moment. Now, he wanted her to push him to the pool? Could it be? Did George want to do something to her? Chloe carefully pushed George to the side of the pool, afraid that George would push her down. Children nowadays were naughty and evil, and he could do anything to her. More importantly, it might not cause him any harm because he was the heir of the leader. Who would dare to hurt him? With that thought, Chloe became even more cautious, and George seemed to be able to sense it too. Nevertheless, he did not behave differently. He just sat quietly in his wheelchair and said, You often bully Candace, don't you? Chloe was stunned, but she knew that George was up to no good. She quickly said, How is that possible? Candace is my sister. How could I bully her? Everyone knows we're close. Is that so? George sneered. It's true. If our relationship wasn't good, why would I treat you and Paige like this? I also hope that by treating you well, you'll treat my sister better and integrate her better into your family. Maybe you've misunderstood me, George. Chloe sounded like she had been wronged. But I heard you caused Candace's acting accident a few years ago, George said bluntly. Chloe's face turned green with fear. She immediately denied it. How could it be me? She was the one who didn't feel well and didn't complete the difficult move. How could I have caused the accident when she was practicing such a highly skilled thing? Who has been the one gossiping and spouting such nonsense? Don't you know whether I'm talking nonsense or not? George's eyes were cold. George, you really shouldn't believe what others say. Think about it. No matter how capable I am, I wouldn't have been able to do anything to those planes when my sister was practicing, right? Yes, but you could have done something to Candace. Chloe was stunned. 
You could have added sleeping pills to the juice you gave Candace, George said casually. George, don't talk nonsense. Chloe's body was trembling. How did George know about what happened back then? He was ten years old now, so how old was George when the accident happened? How could he know about those things? Of course, George would not tell her that he had been investigating Candace's past over the past few days. When he saw her glorious achievements, he was pretty surprised as to why the usually stable Candace would make a mistake in a drill. According to the probability, it was almost impossible. Therefore, he went back to investigate that mistake. George hacked into the official website and found out everything about the accident. After confirming that there was nothing wrong with her body, he hacked into the hospital where Candace had been treated. He found Candace's medical records and found that there was a certain concentration of sleeping pills in Candace's blood. Obviously, that was the reason why Candace made a mistake during the drill. Since the doctor had found out the truth, why did he not announce it publicly? Anyone could tell that he was deliberately trying to hide it. Logically speaking, it was impossible to hide something related to the country unless the person who drugged Candace was very important to the Nicholsons and could not be announced. After giving it some thought, he figured it could only be Chloe. In order to verify his guess, George went to check Chloe's whereabouts back then. He found out that Chloe was indeed by Candace's side during the drill. He also asked around and confirmed that Chloe had always been jealous of Candace. She had always liked to snatch Candace's things since she was young, so he was certain about his conclusion. However, it was one thing to conclude his findings but another to prove it with evidence. Since there was no evidence to accuse Chloe of what she had done back then, it was impossible to send Chloe to prison through legal means. Of course, George did not have so much free time on his hands to care about such things. He was just afraid that Candace, that old woman, would die at Chloe's hands before she could immo the truth. He heard that Candace had lost her memory and could not remember a lot of things. Hence, she probably did not know how Chloe treated her back then. Now, Chloe was acting all innocent and deliberately trying to please her, yet Candace was kind enough to accept her. He was just a chivalrous man. He was definitely not worried about Candace. You know very well that I'm not talking nonsense. I'm just warning you that there will be evidence of what you have done, so don't push your luck. Otherwise, you'll be digging your own grave. George enunciated each word. Chloe was really threatened by that little brat, George, who was to succeed his father as the leader of the country in the future. He was only ten years old, but she was really frightened. She smiled nervously. George, I don't know what you're talking about, but I'm sincerely good to my sister and you guys. George did not say anything else. At that point, it was fine as long as Chloe. Emia that he knew because he did not have that much time to waste on that. He said, please push me back. As such, Chloe could only push George away. She had thought that George wanted to push her into the pool, which was all she thought that little wimp could do. However, she did not expect that George could threaten her without doing anything. She gritted her teeth, feeling very annoyed, but she could only endure it. After pushing George into the hall, George told Teddy to send him back to his room. Chloe looked at George's back and turned around to see Candace sitting on the sofa watching television, looking very relaxed. She could not understand how Candace managed to please that brat, George. She really felt it was difficult to get close to George. In fact, she felt that Candace was completely different from a few years ago. Candace was not like that in the past. Although she was outstanding in all aspects, she was not so capable when it came to dealing with people. Could it be that his brain cells had evolved after lying in bed for a few years? Are you looking for me? Candace looked at Chloe's scrutinizing gaze and asked. Chloe came back to her senses and said, No, I just thought you seemed to have changed a lot from before. Oh, Candace responded softly but did not seem to be too keen on that topic. Chloe sat beside Candace and said affectionately, Sister, do you not remember what happened in the past? Candace shook her head. I don't. Chloe believed Candace was not lying. However, if Candace did not remember anything, how did George know about the past? How could he have known that in order to get Candace into an accident back then, she had deliberately given her a cup of juice with sleeping pills before her sister performed? Moreover, even if Candace did remember, she would not know that Chloe had put sleeping pills in it. Hence, how did George know? Or was that child too smart and deliberately trying to get information out of her? In any case, she would rather die than admit it, and no one would have any evidence. She was sure that she did not leave any evidence behind. Sis, have you ever thought about why Edward suddenly married you? Chloe spoke as if she was chatting casually with Candace without any ulterior motives. We're already married. 
Even if there's a reason, it doesn't matter. What's important is the life we'll live together in the future. Candace did not care about why they were together. After all, she was not bothered about being in a political marriage. All she wanted was to have a peaceful life in the future. Actually, she did not need Edward to love her, nor did she need him to love her that much. As long as the two of them or rather, the family spent the rest of their lives together peacefully, she was content. Have you thought about having children? Chloe asked. Candace was silent for a few seconds. She had thought about it. However, she had not been able to get pregnant for the last few months. Edward already has two children. Do you still want to give him another one? Chloe asked again when she saw that Candace did not answer. Let nature take its course. Candace did not want to say too much about that matter. To be precise, she did not want to say too much to Chloe. I think you do, right? Chloe asked. Candace did not deny it. Actually, I support it too. After all, even if Edward has two children, you don't have one of your own. You'll definitely want to have one of your own. Chloe made it seem like she understood Candace very well. I want to have another child not because I want to have one of my own, but because I want to make the family happier. To me, George and Paige are also my children, and I will treat them equally. You're so magnanimous. If it were me, I might not be able to do it. I would definitely want a child of my own, Chloe said seriously. Candace, however, did not reply as she did not have a good impression of Chloe. They may be biological sisters, but for some reason, she did not feel the same toward Chloe as she did with Monica. She said, I'm going to the washroom. Then, she left. Chloe knew that Candace was not willing to talk to her. In the past, Candace would deliberately fawn over her, but now, just because Candace married Edward, she did not put her seriously anymore. Chloe bit her lip, still unwilling to let Candace get everything. She had thought about it. Since George did not like her so much and was even threatening her, even if she could not marry Edward, she could not let Candace get what she wanted. In any case, it was not good for all of them to be together. She would never tolerate Candace being better than her. Candace returned to her room as she did not want to talk to Chloe. Since her parents would be back in three days, she would definitely send Chloe away when the time came. However, she was a little surprised by how well-behaved Chloe had been the past few days. Other than deliberately pleasing Paige, Chloe did not seem to have done much. Of course, another reason was that Edward was very busy, so it would be difficult for Chloe to do anything. It also made her wonder if Chloe would be angered to death when she left. Candace sat on the balcony, feeling bored. She thought about smoking again, but she suppressed her urge and gave Monica a call instead. She heard Monica was pregnant with twins and wondered how it was going. Candace. The voice on the other end sounded neither warm nor cold. Candace knew that Monica was still partial against her, but she did not seem to mind. She said, How are you now that you're pregnant? Much better. Monica was currently sitting in her office. She stood up from her office chair and walked toward the floor-to-ceiling windows to see a familiar car parked below. A man was standing outside the car and reading a book with his head lowered. Monica shifted her gaze. She did not know when Finn he found that spot. Whenever she wanted to stand in front of the floor-to-ceiling window to get some fresh air, she would see him. Do you still get nausea? Candace asked. It's usually fine in the morning, Monica said indifferently. That's good, Candace replied. You didn't just look for me to ask about my physical condition, did you? That's right, Candace hesitated. When she was chatting with Chloe about having a child, she realized she had not gotten pregnant yet in a few months. The key was that they had not used any contraceptives, so how could she not be pregnant? She did not know who to talk to about that. What's wrong? Is your sex life incompatible with our leaders? Monica asked bluntly. Candace's face turned red. She thought Monica was really bold to say that. However, even Monica was shocked when she said it out loud. How could she be so casual with Candace? It was just like how she was with Jean. At the thought of Jean, Monica was stunned. She suddenly remembered that Jean had also appeared in front of her once in a disguise. Could it be? No, Jean was dead and could not be revived, so Candace must have been possessed. I don't know why I'm still not pregnant after so long. Candace mustered her courage and said. She was afraid that if she did not say it, Monica would not know what to think. Did you guys use birth control? No, and we do it frequently, Candace said. How often? Monica was curious. Candace blushed. If I'm not my period, we'll do it almost every day. Occasionally, we lie. Our leader is really capable, Monica said bluntly. It was just a casual remark, but the moment she said it out loud, it sounded wrong. 
Candace was so embarrassed that she could not say a word. What I mean is that Leader has a great physique, and even though he works so hard, he makes sure to take care of you. Don't think about it the wrong way. It might be better if Monica kept her mouth shut. So, you're not pregnant yet, right? Monica quickly changed the topic. Yes. The leader should be fine with it because he already has two children. Is there something wrong with your body? Monica asked. I don't know. Actually, she also suspected that. Could it be that your accident back then hurt your body? Do you want to go to the hospital for a checkup? Monica suggested. I want to, but. I feel a little embarrassed and don't want Edward to know. I'm afraid that he would feel burdened. I understand. How about this? I'll arrange for a private doctor to do a checkup for you and take you there, Monica quickly said. It was obvious that she was not on good terms with Candace. However, whenever Candace was in trouble, she could not help but help her. All right. Wait for my call. Are we going today? Candace was still not mentally prepared for that. The sooner you die, the sooner you'll be reborn. Was that appropriate to use that sentence here? After Candace hung up the phone, she began to wait. However, she did not wait for long before Monica called. I'll pick you up in half an hour. All right. After hanging up the phone, she became very nervous. What if something really was wrong with her? She took a deep breath, changed into a simple set of clothes, put on some light makeup, and walked out of the room. In the hall, Teddy was still busy with his work. Teddy. Madam, Teddy said respectfully. I have something to attend to now, and Paige is in class. If she doesn't see me when she comes out, let her know that I'll be back in a while. Tell her to be good at home. Okay. Don't allow Chloe to give Paige ice cream anymore. Eating too much of that is not good for her. Yes. Call me if you need anything. All right. Teddy nodded. Candace left the hall to wait after she gave her instructions. Monica acted fast and arrived in a short while. She rolled down the window and said, get in the car. When Candace sat beside Monica, she noticed that Monica seemed to have gotten a little rounder recently and her complexion looked pretty good. I just made an appointment with a private doctor. When we arrive at the hospital, we'll also go through a VIP passageway. I've specially gotten someone to guard the entrance so that no one knows. Thank you. Candace thanked her. It's nothing. I just can't seem to say no to you, Monica muttered, somewhat helpless. Candace smiled and understood why she liked Monica so much. It was because she had a great personality. The car soon arrived at the hospital, and there were indeed security guards around. Not even a fly could fly in. Seeing how cautious Monica was with her, she felt touched. It had always seemed to her that Monica cared more about her than herself. Moreover, she was sure that Monica did not have all that special treatment when she did her own prenatal checkup. The two of them walked into the doctor's office together. After asking about the general situation, they began to do a series of tests. As it was exclusive to VIPs, the checkup was very fast. Candace was still very nervous when she received the results. She and Monica sat in front of the doctor as the doctor looked at the medical report and said, there's no problem. Everything is normal. Normal? In that case, why haven't I gotten pregnant? I don't use any contraceptives. Candace heaved a sigh of relief but could not help but ask. Actually, pregnancy varies from person to person. Some can get pregnant very quickly, but some would take a longer time. This is a little odd to say, but timing is very important. The doctor explained, but there's one thing I need to remind you. You don't have to have sex so frequently. The moment he said it, Monica could not help but laugh. Candace blushed in embarrassment, and she glared at Monica. Monica immediately pulled herself together. Sorry, doctor. Please continue. The doctor was also made a little embarrassed by Monica. After a long while, he recovered and said, because if it's too frequent, it may lead to a lack of quality in the sperm, which would also affect conception. So, I suggest that you have sex once every three days before you ovulate, once a day during the ovulating period, and once every three days after the ovulating period. Other than that, when you're ovulating, it's best you use. The doctor gave some professional advice and guidance, and Candace listened attentively. Monica, who was also listening from the side, thought, are there so many things to take note of during pregnancy? How could it have been so easy for her to get pregnant with the two little things in her belly? The more she thought about it, the more she found it unacceptable. Lastly, I'll prescribe some medicine to help you nourish your body and relieve your psychological stress. You should also prioritize relaxation and don't think too much. Just do as I say. Sometimes, one's mood would affect one's pregnancy, the doctor reminded. 
Okay. Thank you, doctor. You're welcome. The doctor smiled. With that, Candace and Monica left the hospital. In the car, Monica suddenly asked, Did you discuss this matter with the leader? Candace shook her head. No. He already has two children, Monica reminded. It was not that she thought Candace should not have a child with Edward, but she just could not describe her feelings. She just wondered if the family would be even more distant from George after Candace had a child with Edward. Edward did not use a condom, so he probably wants a child. Candace said, Based on my understanding of him, if he doesn't want children, he'll tell me. Monica nodded. With Edward's character, that was indeed the case. However, she sighed in her heart. What was Jean to Edward? Was Jean considered dead to him? Monica looked straight at Candace at that moment, staring at her facial features. Candace frowned, wondering why Monica was looking at her like that. Amidst her confusion, she saw Monica suddenly reach out to grab her face. Candace was startled. What are you doing? All she wanted was to get pregnant and have a child. Was Monica angry because of that? Was everything not fine just now? Monica snapped back to her senses when Candace called out to her. She wanted to see if Candace was wearing a human skin mask. Apparently, it could change a person's face completely. Since Jean had worn that thing previously, could Candace be doing the same too? Did she miss Jean so much that she was going crazy? Monica put down her hand and said faintly, Nothing, I'm just unhappy that you took Jean's place. Candace did not think so because Monica's action just now was clearly to confirm something on her face. Despite that, she went with Monica and said, I'm just replacing her to help take care of her child and the man she loves the most. Why does that sound so B asterisk TCHY? Monica didn't give him any face. It does sound B asterisk TCHY if Jean can still take care of them herself. However, she's now dead, Candace refuted. Monica agreed with Candace. Don't worry. Even if I'm pregnant, I'll treat George and Paige the same. Candace promised. Monica did not reply. It was not that she did not believe Candace, but she was a little disappointed that there was no human skin mask on Candace's face. The car returned to Bamboo Garden. Do you want to go in and see Paige? Candace asked Monica. No Monica refused immediately, but I don't mind seeing George. Candace really liked Monica's honesty. Monica never hid who she liked or disliked. With such a straightforward personality, interacting with Monica was not exhausting at all. The two of them walked into the hall together. In the hall, Chloe was watching television on the sofa. When she saw Candace, she quickly went up to her and said warmly, Sis, you're back. Candace nodded. Is this Monica? I often read news about you, saying that you're a successful businesswoman. I really admire you. Chloe flattered Monica. Monica, however, was utterly disgusted. Usually, women who took the initiative to curry favor were not good people. Suddenly, she thought she found the woman a little similar to Jasmine, and just thinking about it made her feel terrified. I'm going to see George. Monica walked away without glancing at Chloe. Chloe was naturally a little embarrassed, so she turned to look at Candace. However, Candace did not try to smooth things over for her and left with Monica instead. As the two of them walked up the stairs, Candace found it hard to believe that Monica was pregnant. Although Monica was pregnant with twins, her walk was brisk. Even so, Candace made sure to protect her carefully. Didn't you notice you have an extra B asterisk TCH in your house? Monica reminded Candace as she walked. There's nothing to be afraid of. Candace smiled faintly. Monica did not say much. As long as Candace knew, all was good. The two of them walked to George's room together, and Monica pushed the door without knocking before. As soon as she pushed it open, she saw George with red eyes and an old diary in his hand. Candace took a look and found the diary a little strange but familiar. It was as if she had seen it before. She even had the urge to take it and take a look. Why did she always have that feeling? Moreover, some inexplicable images had been flashing in her mind recently. When she thought about it deeper, there was nothing, but when she was not thinking about anything, her mind was filled with images. When George saw Monica and Candace come in, he quickly put away his diary, and the redness in his eyes instantly disappeared. Are you thinking of your mother again? Monica teased. She used a casual tone that did not sound like she was provoking or mocking him, so it would not expose George's weakness and embarrass him. He said, no. In an instant, he returned to that cold and aloof George. Monica did not expose him. Instead, she changed the topic. How's the injury on your leg? Has it recovered? It's recovered, George replied. Why are you still in a wheelchair? 
Monica raised her eyebrows. I'm lazy. Monica looked at George speechlessly. I give full marks for that answer. I heard you're pregnant. George looked at Monica. Yes, I am, with twins. Aren't I impressive? Monica pointed at her flat belly, clearly a little smug. She had probably forgotten that, a long time ago, when she first found out that she was pregnant, she was so devastated that she wanted to cry. Impressive. George nodded meekly for once. By the way, do you want a younger brother or sister? Monica asked. Candace seemed to have just snapped out of her daze from their conversation. Many scenes were playing in her mind, which was filled with images of that notebook. She kept staring at the drawer where George put the notebook. It was as if there was magic in it that kept her in a daze for a long time. Only now did she manage to pull herself back to reality. You're already pregnant, and you're asking me if I want siblings? If I say I don't want them, won't you be furious? George replied seriously. Monica was speechless. That brat just refused to go along with her sometimes, and she wondered how much the woman would despise him if he were to fall in love in the future. In fact, she was not asking George whether he wanted younger siblings from her but from Candace instead. At that moment, Candace was actually looking forward to George's answer. There was no need to ask Paige because she kept asking for a sister every day. However, what about George? Would he accept having another child at home? Or could it be that George could not accept it because it was not Chiao Ching's child? Aren't you going to marry Uncle Finn? asked George. Who said I'll have to marry him? Aren't you pregnant with his children? Who said I have to get married just because I'm pregnant with his child? In that case, why are you carrying his child and not someone else's? Why do you care so much? Monica was a little speechless at how the brat was meddling in her affairs. It's nothing. I was just afraid that no one would want you with the two babies. What do you think of me as? As long as I say I'm looking for a man, all men in Southampton City will be fighting each other to be my baby's dad, Monica said proudly. George did not believe it. I just took a break from my busy schedule to see how you're recovering. Monica said, I'll get going now. George nodded. No matter how much he could not bear to part with her, he would not show it on his face. He would not force others to do anything for him either. He had always been very independent. He did not know if he was born this way, or, he forced himself to become like that. Be good and get some good rest. Yeah. When Monica left George's room, Candace followed suit and sent Monica out. After she watched Monica leave in the car, she stood there in a daze. For some reason, she felt that everything around her was becoming increasingly familiar all the scenes looked more and more familiar. However, why did she feel that way? Madam. Teddy's voice suddenly sounded from behind. Candace turned around. Madam, Paige has been complaining about a stomachache, Teddy said anxiously. Candace quickly ran back to the hall. In the hall, Chloe, as well as the tutor and the nanny who were at home, surrounded Paige. It hurts. My stomach hurts so much. It's so uncomfortable, Paige cried out. Her little face was scrunched up in pain. Candace hurried over. Paige. Mom, my stomach hurts. When Paige saw Candace, she reached out for Candace to carry her. Candace did not hug Paige immediately. Instead, she touched Paige's stomach. Here? No Paige shook her head. It's here. Her chubby little hands touched the place where her stomach hurt. Here? Candace pressed down. Ow! Paige screamed and said, Mom, it hurts here too. Then, she pulled Candace's hand and moved it to the side. Do you want to go to the toilet, Paige? Candace asked. I will take you to the toilet. No, it hurts. Be good. Candace hugged Paige. Paige was in so much pain that tears streamed down her face. Chloe quickly pulled Candace back and asked anxiously, Sis, should we send Paige to the hospital? No need. I think she just ate something bad and needs to go to the toilet. You didn't even take her to see a doctor. How do you know she just has a stomachache? Because I know you gave Paige ice cream early in the morning before she had breakfast. It must have caused a reaction in her stomach. What if it's not? How can you be so hasty to decide? Do you not love Paige? Is your relationship with Paige superficial? You're not a doctor. If something happens to Paige Dash. Candace ignored Chloe's nonsense and pushed her away. As her push was quite strong, Chloe was pushed a few steps back. It stunned the tutor and the others, but no one dared to say a word. Candace simply carried Paige to the washroom without caring about Chloe. Chloe looked at Candace with an ugly expression. She thought about it for a moment before she walked to the side and picked up the phone to make a call. It was a call to Edward. She had seen the number on her father's phone once and had secretly saved it. 
After a while, the call went through. Chloe said agitatedly, Edward, come back quickly. Paige's stomach hurts. It's very serious. You should come back now to take a look. Where's Candace? She's with Paige. Come back quickly. She sounded so anxious. It was as if something big had happened. The other party hung up the phone abruptly. When Chloe saw the words call ended, she smiled wickedly. She refused to believe that Edward did not care about Candace's arbitrary way of treating Paige. Inside the toilet, Candace put Paige on the small toilet and said to Paige, Paige, you have to be brave. Try to poop. Just poop it out. Mom, I don't need to poop. I just have a stomach ache. Will you listen to me? No. You're horrible, Mommy. Be good. I will accompany you to poop. Candace comforted Paige. Seeing that she could not be willful, Paige could only listen to her mother and try to poop. Mom, my stomach hurts. That's because there are bugs in your stomach. Paige, you just have to poop out the bugs. Boohoo, Paige was sobbing uncontrollably. Actually, Candace's heart was aching too, but she had just done a basic checkup on Paige. It was not appendicitis, nor was it gastric. It was just a simple stomach ache, and it was a sudden, acute pain. Coupled with the ice cream that Paige ate early in the morning, she could basically conclude that Paige had eaten something bad. The fastest way to solve the stomach ache was to go to the toilet. Once Paige pooped, there would not be much of a problem. Of course, if she continued to have diarrhea, she would have to be sent to the hospital, but not now. She accompanied Paige in the bathroom and guided her to poop. Actually, Paige was resistant to pooping, and she could tell that the little girl had never suffered any pain since she was young. At that moment, the pain in her stomach was unbearable. Mom, I don't want to poop. I want to see a doctor. I want Uncle Finn to come and see me, Paige started making a scene again. Peggy, be good. If you poop now, I'll get Uncle Finn to come and see you. Mommy, you're horrible. Be good. I want Daddy. Paige cried aggrievedly. Paige, if you keep doing this, Mom really won't like it. Paige looked at Candace with tears in her eyes. You have to be a brave and strong child. You can't cry so easily. Look at how serious your brother's injury was, and he didn't cry. If you can't be brave and you only have a stomachache. I don't think I like children like that. Paige's big eyes were teary, and she looked extremely pitiful. Be good. You must poop now, Candace said sternly to Paige. There was no room for negotiation, and Paige knew she could not dissuade Candace. Although she was against pooping at the start, she seemed to be trying now. Her little face was so serious that it was flushed red. She was trying really hard to poop. Mommy, it hurts, Paige was still crying because of the pain in her stomach. Don't cry. Paige's big eyes were filled with grievance. Candace, on the other hand, was not as cold-blooded as she appeared to be. When she saw how upset Paige was, her heart ached. However, if she did not take it seriously and got her poop on her own, Paige's stomachache would persist. Besides, Paige's personality was different from George's. Paige had been pampered and had probably never been hurt since she was young, so whenever something happened, she would rely on the people around her. However, if that continued, it would not be good for Paige's future growth. Paige needed to slowly understand that there were many things that others could not help her with and that she could only rely on herself. As crying sounds came from the toilet, Chloe wanted to rush in a few times but was stopped by Teddy. Teddy, if anything happens to Paige, can you bear the responsibility? Chloe shouted at Teddy. The madam is inside. She will take good care of Paige. She isn't Paige's biological mother, so she can't decide what's best for Paige. In that case, Ms. Nicholson, you have even less right to decide for Paige. Teddy said with a serious expression. Chloe gritted her teeth. She was really pissed off by Teddy. She did not understand how a servant could be so arrogant in this household. I told you to get out of the way. Chloe scolded. I won't. I'll say it again. Get out of my way. Chloe threatened fiercely. Still, Teddy did not move. Slan. Chloe suddenly slammed Ted's face hard. It was deafening, and Teddy's expression was a little ugly. However, he could not fight back. Chloe had been holding her emotions in for a long time, angry at how Teddy was always against her. Hence, she had to take the opportunity to teach him a lesson. Are you going to give way or not? Chloe threatened again. I won't. Teddy still did not move. Chloe raised her hand and slapped Teddy's face again. It was still as hard as the slap before. What are you doing? At the same time, a stern male voice suddenly sounded in the hall. Chloe was shocked, but in the next second, her eyes reddened. 
She quickly ran to Edward's side and said with an aggrieved expression, Edward, Paige's stomach hurts a lot, but for some reason, my sister refuses to send Paige to the hospital. I was very anxious to send Peggy to the hospital, but Teddy kept stopping me. So, I couldn't help but slap him. Edward, what's wrong with my sister? She made herself sound like the victim. However, Edward did not even look at Chloe as he walked straight to the bathroom. Half of Teddy's face was red. Edward's eyes turned cold. He asked, what happened? Paige was in class today when she suddenly had a stomachache. Madam just did a simple checkup on Paige and confirmed that she had eaten something bad today, Teddy reported. My sister isn't a doctor. How can she tell that Paige has a stomachache? What if it's not? Chloe stood at the side and deliberately added fuel to the fire. Paige should be fine. Teddy ignored Chloe and continued to report to Edward. I can hear her crying inside, but I believe Madam knows her limits. Edward nodded and said, I'll go in and take a look. Teddy stepped aside. Edward opened the door to the toilet and walked in to see that Paige's face was red as she tried her best to poop. Candace was by Paige's side, holding her chubby little hand as if she was helping Paige push. When Paige saw her father suddenly appear, she burst into tears again. Daddy. Candace really wanted to throw a fit at that moment. It was not easy to calm Paige down and make her focus on pooping, but she did not expect someone to appear halfway through. Daddy, my stomach hurts. As Paige spoke, she wanted to get down from the toilet bowl and get Edward to pick her up. However, Candace held Paige down and said to Edward, Get out first. Paige dash. Get out first. Candace's expression was serious. I'll get Finn to come over, Edward said. You don't believe my judgment either, do you? Candace asked Edward. No, I just think that since Paige is in so much pain, we can help her to poop in other ways. The reason why Paige isn't so brave is because you protect her too well. It's just pooping. Which child didn't poop by themselves? Candace asked Edward. Edward pursed his lips. Daddy. Paige looked pitiful. Edward felt a little sorry for her. If you trust me, go out and wait. Candace was very serious. Daddy, don't go. Tears rolled down Paige's eyes. Edward hesitated for two seconds before he turned around and walked out. Daddy, Paige called out to him loudly. However, Edward closed the toilet door behind him. Candace then turned to look at Paige, who looked extremely pitiful, as if she had been abandoned by someone. Edward must have had great self-restraint to not throw away all his principles after seeing Paige's expression. Now, Daddy is gone too. Candace forced herself to be cold. You can only rely on yourself. Mommy, I hate you. Paige, listen to Mommy. You must poop on your own. Boo-hoo, Paige cried. Be good. Candace held Paige's hand. Paige bit her lips and could only try to poop again. She was forcing it out so hard that her face turned red again. She even made the sound of children trying their best to poop. Candace was actually anxious because she was afraid that Paige would not be able to control her poop at such a young age. However, Paige was doing the right thing. Paige worked very hard for a long time until finally, she pooped and a lot at that. After Paige pooped, her stomach instantly stopped hurting. She looked at Candace in surprise. Mom, my stomach doesn't hurt anymore. It's because you were brave enough to poop the bug out. Without the bug biting your stomach, it won't hurt anymore. Yes, yes. Paige was thrilled. Candace heaved a sigh of relief. She wiped Paige's butt clean. If you still have a stomachache, you must tell me. All right, Paige said obediently. Candace held Paige's hand as they walked out of the toilet. Paige, how are you? Just as they walked out, Chloe suddenly ran over and hugged Paige. I'm fine after I pooped, Paige quickly said. It's all my fault, Chloe suddenly cried out loudly, looking extremely remorseful. I shouldn't have given Paige ice cream just because she wanted to eat it. If I had known earlier, I wouldn't have given it to her. It's all my fault for making your stomach hurt. Her mood changed really quickly, and it was the first time Teddy witnessed it. I'm fine now, aunt. Paige was probably shocked by Chloe's sudden crying. At that moment, she could not help but lean closer to Candace. But seeing you in so much pain, my heart aches for you. Paige, will you forgive me? Paige, of course, was not mature enough to care. Hence, when she saw Chloe crying, she quickly nodded. I'll forgive you. Paige, you're such a good child. Come, let me hug you. As she spoke, Chloe was about to pick Paige up. However, Candace rejected her directly. Paige, it's time to go back to class. Chloe secretly gritted her teeth. She knew Candace just could not bear to see her and Paige getting along. Mr. Frank, 
thank you so much, Candace called out to the teacher who was waiting for her at the side. It's my job, teacher Wang quickly agreed. Paige, let's go. Let's continue with the class. Paige just had diarrhea. Doesn't she need some rest? Chloe pretended to be a good person. No need, Candace said bluntly. The teacher was at a loss for words and could not help but glance at Edward, who was standing at the side. Only after seeing Edward nod, he took Paige away. Chloe was really jealous of how Edward indulged Candace. In fact, she thought that Edward would be angry at Candace for treating Paige like that. She knew very well that Edward doted on her daughter very much, whom he treated like a precious treasure. However, she did not expect that he would compromise for Candace. Don't you have to go to work? Candace asked Edward. I called Edward to come back, Chloe quickly said. Because I was too worried about Paige, I couldn't help but inform Edward. It's okay. You can go back to work. If Paige's stomach still hurts, I'll call Finn over. Edward nodded and said, send me off. It meant to see him off, which Candace did not refuse, and she followed Edward out of the hall. Chloe looked at them and stomped her feet. Somehow, she had a feeling that she could not break them up no matter what. How could Edward tolerate Candace so much? He clearly did not love her. If he loved her, he would not have stopped her from getting pregnant. However, if he did not love her, why was he so nice to Candace? Was it just because of political reasons that he had no choice but to treat her well? Outside the hall, Candace sent Edward into the car. The moment Edward got into the car, he said, Candace, are you very dissatisfied with the way I educate Paige? Candace was stunned. She thought that Edward had called her out to tell her that she was too stern with Paige just now. After all, in front of so many people, Edward had also considered her reputation, but she did not expect Edward to suddenly ask her about Paige's education. It's my first time being a father to such a young child, so I don't have any experience either. I'm always afraid that I won't take good care of her, and then, Edward hesitated. At that moment, it felt to Candace that he wanted to say he would not be able to answer to Paige's mother. George didn't grow up by my side. He only came back to me when he was six. Edward seemed to be explaining why he doted on Paige so much. No, I think Paige is wonderful. She has a good personality and a good upbringing. It's just that she's too dependent. However, I understand you. After all, it's very difficult for a single father to be a good father. I've already made arrangements for Paige to go to kindergarten. From now on, I'll listen to you when it comes to Paige's education. Candace smiled. All right. She agreed right away. She thought, even though she and Edward could not become a husband and wife who truly loved each other, they could become life partners who trusted each other. Everyone's pursuit of marriage and happiness was different. To her, she believed that becoming part of a family was also a kind of happiness, and it did not have to be a passionate love. I'm going to work, Edward said. Be careful on the road. Candace smiled, looking like a good wife and mother. Candace watched the car disappear from her sight before she turned around and returned to the lobby. In the hall, Chloe seemed to be blaming herself. When she saw Candace return, she quickly went up to her. Sis, did Edward scold you because of me? It was all my fault. If I weren't so worried about Paige, I wouldn't have called Edward, and it wouldn't have caused a conflict between the two of you dash. Slap. Candace suddenly gave Chloe a hard slap across her face. Chloe was stunned. She covered her face and looked at Candace in disbelief. Sis, why are you venting your anger on me because you and Edward had a conflict? I was just concerned about Paige. Do you have to hit me like this? Slap. Candace slapped her again. The deafening sound echoed in the hall. Chloe's face was swollen from the slap, and she was also infuriated. She could not believe that Candace actually hit her, and Candace even slapped her twice. She then raised her hand, wanting to slap Candace back. Try it. Candace's eyes narrowed. Her sharp gaze was lethal. Chloe's raised hand froze in midair. She was shocked by Candace. Those two slaps are for Teddy, Candace said coldly. She could hear clearly from the toilet that Chloe slapped Teddy twice. You still have three days left, and you'd better restrain yourself. Otherwise, next time, it won't be as simple as an eye for an eye, Candace threatened. Her cold voice sent shivers down Chloe's spine. Chloe bit her lips tightly and watched as Candace turned around to leave after saying that. It seemed like Candace did not take her seriously at all. Was it just because she became the leader's wife she could be so arrogant? All of Chloe's suppressed emotions erupted at that moment. She shouted at Candace, Candace, do you really think that you can get carried away just because you're the leader's wife? Let me tell you, Edward only married you because you're dad's daughter. 
Do you really think Edward loves you? Candace stopped in her tracks. She had always known that Edward did not love her. Even if she was confused sometimes, she knew her limits. She realized from the first time she heard him call out Jean's name after he fell asleep that their marriage was a political marriage and that their happiness only came from helping each other. You really want to get pregnant with Edward's child and secure your position as leader's wife, don't you? Chloe mocked. I didn't want to say it at first because I was afraid of hurting you, but now I think I have to remind you so that you don't think too highly of yourself. Candace frowned. Then, she heard Chloe enunciate each word from behind her. Edward has been giving you birth control pills. Candace remained silent for a long time because of what Chloe said. She had always thought that she and Edward could have no feelings for each other. It was very clear that they were together because of a political marriage, so they just had to treat each other with respect and accompany each other peacefully for the rest of their lives. That was all she asked for, but was she asking too much of that marriage? Sis, I really didn't want to tell you, but I can't stand seeing you so stubborn. I'm afraid you'll get hurt in the end. Chloe calmed herself down a little and started to make herself seem like a good person again. Chloe actually did not want to tell Candace so soon. She wanted to say it when Edward was around, so she could cause a conflict between them and then take advantage of the situation. She admitted she was a little impulsive now, but she also felt that she had to say it. After all, it was too difficult for her to get close to Edward. She had never seen a man ignore her to this extent. In the past, she could easily make any man who liked Candace like her. Only Edward, whom she wanted the most, could not be hers. Since she could not get him, she had to create opportunities for herself to get him. Now, she had figured it out. Although she could not seduce Edward, she could create a conflict between Edward and Candace. Once they had a conflict, it was very likely that they would get a divorce. Once they got a divorce, she would have a chance. After all, the reason why Edward and Candace were together was because of her family background. Without Candace, she could replace her. As intended, it was a well-played game. How did you know? Candace asked her. Just a second ago, she looked as if her world was crumbling down. However, at that moment, she looked as calm as water, like nothing had happened. Chloe was certain that Candace was putting up an act. That woman had indeed changed too much after being in a coma. She said, I couldn't sleep this morning and woke up a little early, so I walked around Bamboo Garden and accidentally saw Teddy making breakfast in the kitchen in the back garden. I wanted to greet him, but I saw him put some white powder in your breakfast. I instinctively thought it was a little strange, so I didn't disturb him. It wasn't until Teddy left that I quietly walked in and picked up the torn wrapping paper. I then went back to the room to put it together and saw the words emergency contraception pill written on it. Candace still did not seem to believe it, or rather than saying she did not believe it, she just wanted to confirm it because she did not want to wrongly accuse anyone. Do you still have the wrapping paper? Yes. Show it to me. All right, Chloe quickly said. The two of them went upstairs one after the other and entered Chloe's room. Chloe took the wrapping paper out of the drawer and started to put it together again. Candace, however, immediately began to piece it together at a shockingly fast speed, which surprised Chloe. It took her at least two hours to piece it together, but Candace only took twenty minutes at most. Did that woman not only have a higher eek but also a higher IQ? Candace quietly pieced the wrapping paper together. Then, she saw a string of words on the packaging paper. Chloe looked at Candace's silence and deliberately fanned the flames. Sis, WHV. Do you think Edward won't let you get pregnant? Candace, too, wanted to ask why. If he did not want to have more kids, he could just tell her directly. There was no need to hide it from her in such a way. As long as there was a reasonable reason, she could accept it. Fine, a woman might not find it easy to accept. After all, a woman would definitely want a family and children of her own after she got married. Sis, I really don't want to sow discord between you both. I'm just worried that you'll be fooled by Edward. I see you treating Edward's two children as your own, but look at how he's treating you. To stop you from having children, he even gave you birth control pills. Everyone knows that birth control pills have side effects. If you take them for too long of a period, you would become infertile. Chloe was all riled up. She was deliberately exaggerating, to incite Candace's hatred for Edward. She believed that no woman could accept such a thing. In a marriage, it was equivalent to having an affair, or even worse. Candace could not possibly have no self-esteem at all. After being bullied by Edward to that extent, she would definitely make a fuss for the sake of that so-called position as the leader's wife, right? Chloe was just waiting for the drama to unfold. 
At that moment, Candace picked up all the wrapping papers in front of her. Chloe looked at Candace's actions and assumed that Candace would definitely bring it to Edward to question him. She was laughing sinisterly in her heart when she saw Candace suddenly walk into the toilet with the wrapping paper. She quickly followed her and watched in disbelief as Candace threw the wrapping paper into the toilet bowl and flushed it down. Candace. Chloe was so angry that she even called her by her name. Let's just let this matter pass. Other than you and me, don't tell anyone else. How can you do that for the sake of your position? Don't you care about your dignity? Chloe looked at Candace in disbelief. She did not expect such an outcome for Candace to choose such a method for the sake of power and reputation. She had always thought that Candace had strong self-esteem and could not tolerate being deceived or even hurt like that. Accompanying the king is like accompanying a tiger. Candace looked at Chloe. Do you really think Edward and I are equals in this marriage? Even if that is the case, you should clarify things. There's no need for you to swallow your anger. This is my business. Candace immediately interrupted Chloe. Chloe, no matter what your motive is for today's incident, I should remind you not to provoke Edward. You can't afford to offend him, and neither can the Nicholsons. You make it sound so righteous and honorable, but aren't you just loving your current identity? Of course, it's normal. No woman in the world wouldn't want to be the wife of the leader and be admired by thousands of people. It's not that I don't understand, but I just look down on you for being willing to stoop so slow for the sake of benefits. I look down on women like you, Chloe said indignantly. Whether you look down on me or are deliberately trying to break me and Edward up, you know that very well. I don't want to waste my breath with you here, but I will say one last thing. When you leave here in three days, you best not do anything for the next three years. Otherwise, no one can protect you. Protect me? When have you protected me? Chloe sneered. You can't wait for me to leave because you're afraid I'll snatch your position. Ever since we were young, you've known that men like me more, so you're also afraid that Edward would fall for me. Candace, I know exactly what you're thinking. I know exactly what you're thinking. Candace said coldly, but before you do it, Chloe, you'd better think about how much you're worth. If you can do it, why can't I? How am I worse than you? Chloe did not want to hide her true feelings anymore. She did not want to play any games with Candace. If everyone wanted to shed all pretense of cordiality, so be it. If it weren't for you, I would have married Edward. If not for you, all the glory would be mine. It was you who stole everything from me. Even if I want to snatch it back now, it's not wrong. Your mistake is that you don't know your limits, Candace said nonchalantly to Chloe. At that moment, she stopped talking to Chloe, turned around, and left Chloe's room. That was all she needed to say. If Chloe wanted to court her own death, so be it. She had no compassion for Chloe as a family at all. Deep in her heart, she felt like they were just strangers. When Candace returned to her room, she lay on the bed and stared at the ceiling in a daze. In the end, she could not be as indifferent about it as she wanted to be. Although she was not overly sad about it, after all, she already knew that Edward had no feelings for her, and she was actually holding back her feelings for him, she was just a little disappointed. If he had made it clear from the beginning, even if she could not accept it, at least she would not have felt cheated or been so silly as to go to the hospital for a checkup to see if there was something wrong with her body. Now that she thought about it, she felt that she was being too conceited. Chloe looked at Candace's cold back and felt like she was going to go crazy from anger. It did not go according to her expectations at all. In fact, it was completely out of her expectations. How could Candace be so calm? How could she let that matter go as if nothing had happened? She had finally created a conflict between them. How could she just flush it away like that? Chloe gritted her teeth. She refused to believe that she would not be able to affect Candace and Edward's marriage. With that, she composed herself and picked up the phone to make a call. The call connected. Hello. Edward, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Chloe sobbed. What's the matter? The other party sounded indifferent. I didn't do it on purpose. I really didn't. I I, at that moment, Chloe was even getting a little emotional and sounded like she was about to cry. If you can't explain it clearly now, you can call me back when your emotions have stabilized. I'm very busy. He was so cold that he was almost inhuman. So many men in the world loved her, but how could Edward be so cold-blooded to her? She quickly said, I didn't mean to tell my sister about Teddy giving her birth control pills. I just let it slip. I'm really afraid that it'll affect your relationship. I don't know what to do. I. The more she spoke, the more sorry she sounded. It was as if she had done something terribly wrong and was extremely guilty when, in reality, a triumphant smile was stretched across Chloe's face. 
Candace wanted to let the matter rest peacefully, but she would not let Chloe get what she wanted. She had to expose the conflict between them so that they had to talk about the matter. Edward, what should I do now? What do you think I should do to make up for the mistake I just made? Otherwise, I'll feel bad for the rest of my life. Chloe kept making herself seem like the victim to make herself seem pitiful. However, the other party hung up the phone. He was so cold to her that Chloe wanted to smash her phone. No man could resist her pitiful appearance. What right did Edward have to treat her like that? Edward hung up the phone and sat in the huge office. The highest administrative office of Harkin was right beside the moat. Even though it was not high up, nothing was in front of it to block the view. You guys should head out first, Edward said coldly. Yes. The people who had been respectfully accompanying him left. After that, Edward took out a cigarette and lit it. He thought, sure enough, if he lied once, he would have to cover the lie up with more lies until he could not pull himself out from the lies. Then, when the day come when those lies were exposed, it was too late. He smoked one cigarette after another until the entire office was filled with the smell of cigarettes. He put out the last cigarette butt and picked up his phone. He opened the surveillance application on his phone and looked at the surveillance camera in Bamboo Garden. Candace was playing with Paige in the hall. There was a smile on her face, and she looked no different from usual. However, was it good or bad? At night, Candace coaxed Paige to sleep. Just as she was about to return to her room, she stopped in her tracks when she passed by George's room. It was because there was something about George's diary that she could not describe. It was as if she had an uncontrollable impulse to look at that diary. For some reason, it seemed to her that there was a lot of truth written in that diary. Nevertheless, she controlled her emotions and walked past George's room. She was just at the door to her room when she saw Edward return in his suit. No matter how late it was, his aura was still powerful, and he would never let her see how tired he was. You're back. Candace smiled. Edward nodded. Yes. Have you had dinner? I have, Edward replied. You should rest early. Candace naturally took his hand. It was as if nothing had happened between them and things were still the same between them as if Candace did not know that he had put birth control pills in her breakfast. When they returned to the room, Candace went to the bathroom to prepare a bath for Edward. You should take a shower first. Edward nodded and watched as Candace busied herself for him as usual. By the time he came out of the shower, Candace had fallen asleep. She looked like she was already asleep, but she left a dim light for him. Hence, Edward carefully got onto the bed and turned off the lights. The room instantly turned dark. Edward reached out and pulled Candace into her arms, but Candace did not resist. As he lowered his head and kissed her, she also, responded to him. It seemed like what Chloe had told him in the afternoon was fabricated and Candace did not seem to know about it at all. Of course, it was not fabricated. After all, Shirial did take the morning after pill that he secretly gave to her. Under the night sky, the two bodies became more and more intimate. They were doing intimate things that husband and wife would do. Can we use condoms? Candace suddenly asked in the dark. Edward's body stiffened. Will the pills have any side effects? She asked. She was simply asking him for an answer. She was not angry at all. It won't, he answered. He had admitted to having given her birth control pills. All right. Candace nodded, which meant that she allowed it. However, Edward did not move and stayed on top of Candace, pressing her body down under his. The two of them remained silent in the dark. Aren't you angry? Edward suddenly asked after some time. The sound woke Candace up, and she was in a daze for a long time before she realized what Edward had just said. She said, I'm not angry. Edward fell silent again. Of course, I wished you would tell me earlier. Candace added, so I wouldn't have much hope. Were you looking forward to it? It's what you think. I just thought that you and I hadn't used any contraception when we had sex because we wanted to have a child. That was why I thought we would have a child together, and I looked forward to it. But if you had told me earlier, I might not have had such thoughts. Do you want to know why I did it? When I found out the truth this afternoon, I wanted to know why. After all, I've thought about it a lot. I don't know how having another child will affect you, and I really can't think of why. But now, I don't think there's a need to know. You have your reasons, and I'll respect your choice, Candace said lightly. Why are you compromising and tolerating me? Edward asked her. Isn't this our marriage? When I agreed to this marriage, I was prepared for all this. In fact, the current state of our marriage is much better than I expected. I always thought that you were a cold and serious person who did not understand relationships. However, you're much warmer than I thought. What she said was true. 
Candace did not make it up because she wanted to show how magnanimous she was. The marriage was indeed much better than she had expected. She did not have to talk herself into thinking she was satisfied. You, do you love me? Edward suddenly asked, and it even caught him off guard. Candace had thought that problem would never arise between them because once it appeared, it would affect the relationship between husband and wife. She said, do you care about these things? I don't know. Edward gave an ambiguous answer. For me to be a good wife to you who doesn't cause trouble for you, think more about you, and take good care of your children, Candace said, that's what you care about, right? I'm greedier than you think. Edward enunciated each word. It's best not to. Candace refused. Edward's throat moved slightly. This will only burden you. Candace was really calm. The best relationship we can have is when I don't fall in love with you and you don't fall in love with me. Only then can our marriage be more stable. Why don't you love me? Edward asked her, before this, you probably didn't know that I gave you birth control pills, but why didn't you fall in love with me? Candace was silent for a few seconds. Are you rejecting me here? Edward asked. His slender fingers pointed at her heart. Was it because her heart had rejected him and that was why she did not love him subconsciously? No Candace said, you're the one who talks in your sleep, where you often call. Jean's name. Edward was stunned. In the darkness, he looked at Candace quietly. When did I start doing that, he asked her. Not long ago, or a month ago, or a little earlier, or a little later. I forgot, Candace said. She said it so casually, like she did not care. Paige is Jean's daughter, right? Candace felt that since everything was out in the open, she should just say it all. Only after airing everything out in the open could their marriage be better. Moreover, Edward had already been married three times. He could not possibly get divorced again, right? No matter what, the leader of a country could not treat marriage as child's play. Yes, Edward replied. You like Jean very much, don't you? Yes. You've always liked Jean, right? Yes. Other than her, you won't like any other woman, right? Edward hesitated. You don't have to answer. I know, Candace said calmly. There were no emotions in her voice. So you don't have to feel guilty or bad toward me. When I first agreed to this marriage, I accepted that it would be a political marriage. Actually, I didn't have much expectations for this marriage. However, after we got married, I realized that our marriage was much better than I thought. I always thought I wouldn't be able to get along well with your children and that I wouldn't be able to be a good wife and mother. But for some reason, after coming here, I feel that everything is at my fingertips, physically and spiritually, and I've accepted the role faster than I thought. Edward remained silent. It was as if he could not say anything. Candace said, marriage can also be just a family relationship. In fact, I have this feeling like we've always been family, not just to you, but to George and Paige as well. So, I think we're doing really well now. You don't have to feel sorry for me just because you don't like me. I really don't have such high expectations. Perhaps I have one more request. What request? Edward's voice was a little deep. Perhaps he was suppressing his emotions, or perhaps he was just saying those words emotionlessly. Stop lying to me. Candace said, you can tell me anything. Even if I can't accept it now, I'll accept it slowly. However, if you lie to me, I'll feel unworthy of myself. Take the fact that you don't want me to have children for example. I even went to the hospital for a physical examination today because I thought that my previous accident had done something to my body. I was a little worried that you would be disappointed if I couldn't have children. Things like that make me feel that I'm embarrassing myself. Things like that make me feel that I'm embarrassing myself. Candace's voice was clear and emotionless. It was as if she was just stating a fact or she was telling someone else's story that did not affect her much. Edward, however, did not reply. The quiet night was especially peaceful, and Candace did not say anything else. All she needed was to state her thoughts clearly. As for whether Edward wanted to listen or do as she said. To be honest, she had no confidence he would and could not control it, so she would not force it. She closed her eyes and slowly fell asleep. In her dreams, she felt someone hugging her tightly, as if he was afraid of losing her. She also seemed to hear a voice whispering in her ear, saying, One day, you will hate me. She denied it or wanted to deny it, but she was too sleepy to open her eyes. Deep down, she believed she would never hate Edward. She was respectful of his position and understood their identities. Since she understood that, she would not allow herself to fall too deep into it and hate him. At that time, she really thought so, if she did not, start to recall many things later on. The next day, Candace did a stretch. 
As George did not have to get up early to go to school at home, he basically had breakfast with them, so she did not have to get up alone. She moved her body and looked at Edward, who was still sleeping beside her. She was actually a little surprised. Was it still early? Why was Edward not up yet? Why had he not left? She could not help but take out her phone to look at the time. It was past 8 a.m. in the morning. Logically speaking, Edward should have already gone out by now, yet he was still lying on the bed. Did he oversleep? Did their conversation last night made him so unhappy that it affected his sleep? She hurriedly called out to him, Edward, wake up. It's late. Edward seemed to move his eyebrows and nothing else. Edward. Ah. Candace suddenly screamed. She had only reached out to call him. However, she did not expect that just as she reached out her hand, Edward would grab her. At the same time, he pressed Candace under his body at an astonishing speed and kissed her passionately without hesitation. Oh. Candace twisted her body and tried to resist, but he was so strong that she could not do so. How could she resist Edward? Therefore, in the next second, she took the initiative to respond to him. Early in the morning, the air felt different, and after a long time, the two of them came out of the bathroom together. They had to admit that that was the best way to wake up immediately. You're late for work, Candace said as she helped Edward with his tie. Is it okay? It's fine if I'm late occasionally. All right. Candace nodded and helped him with his tie. It's done. Edward took a look and the corners of his lips curled up into a smile. He seemed very satisfied with the tie she had tied for him. After that, the two of them walked out of the room and went downstairs intimately. Downstairs, Chloe was already playing in the living room with Paige in her arms. Paige, that heartless little girl, had completely forgotten that she had to wake her mother up with a kiss every morning. However, the moment she saw them, she was still very excited. Her small body pushed Chloe away, and she ran towards them. Daddy, Mommy, you're finally up. Edward picked Paige up from the ground. It was obvious that he doted on Paige. Did you guys wake up so late because, you're going to give me a little sister? Paige asked innocently. Edward's expression changed slightly, and he turned to look at Candace. He saw her calm expression. It seemed like she had overcome the issue of not having kids anymore. However, Candace's calmness really made him feel a little uncomfortable. It was as if she had let go of all worldly desires and did not have much pursuit for anything. A person like that could turn around and leave whenever she wanted to. Chloe was not far away from them. She did not know how they would get along after she deliberately exposed the conflict in their relationship yesterday. She even hoped that they would have a big fight and Candace would run away from home. Once Candace left, she would have a chance to get close to Edward. However, what was going on now? They went downstairs together and teased Paige in a friendly manner. From their faces, there was no sign that she had ruined their relationship. To think that when she was teasing Paige this morning, she had deliberately told Paige that Edward and Candace were going to give her little sister for her to, in turn, provoke Candace. How could Candace be so indifferent to it? That woman was really willing to lose her dignity for status and power, and Candace was definitely not like that in the past. What exactly went wrong? Was Candace still the same woman? I have to go to work now, so you have to listen to mommy at home, okay? Edward did not answer Paige and directly changed the topic. Children's attention was usually easy to divert, so Paige quickly replied, Okay. You can't eat ice cream whenever you want anymore? You have a weak stomach. If you eat too much, you'll get a stomach ache. Look at how in pain you were yesterday. We also felt very bad when we saw you suffering. Yes. Like a little girl who had done something wrong, Paige lowered her head and accepted the criticism. I'm leaving now. Give me a kiss. After being a little serious, Edward immediately became gentle. It was true. He was very good to Paige. In fact, he doted on her a little too much. Candace stood at the side and watched their interaction. She thought to herself that it was pretty amazing that Paige's personality did not go astray under Edward's unprincipled doting. Paige quickly planted a big kiss on Edward's face, and Edward tapped on. Paige's little nose. Just as he wanted to put Paige down and leave, Paige's young voice suddenly said, Mommy wants to kiss Daddy too. Why? Candace pulled Paige over from Edward. We can't make Daddy late to work. Daddy's very busy. Brother says that people who like each other kiss each other. Paige said very seriously, I like Daddy. Don't you like Daddy, Mommy? Candace did not answer Paige, nor did she dwell on that matter. Anyway, kissing Edward was not a big deal, and she did not want to waste too much of Edward's time because of her. Since she was sure of her position in the family, she had to do her part. 
With that, she leaned over and planted a kiss on Edward's cheek. Then, Edward smiled and said, I'm leaving. Bye, Daddy. Paige waved obediently. Bye. Edward looked at Paige and then at Candace, who smiled at him. Seeing her smile, Edward's throat moved slightly. He was actually afraid that she would do that because the more she behaved that way, the less she cared. He would rather she lose her temper at him. However, he was also afraid that after her temper subsided, she would turn around and leave. Edward held back his emotions and turned to leave. Edward. Chloe, who was standing at the side, quickly called out to him and followed him out of the hall. Candace watched Chloe's actions coldly. If she said he did not mind, she would be lying. However, because they had made their relationship clear now, she suddenly had a feeling that she was fine if anything happened between Edward and Chloe and she would not interfere. Outside the hall, Chloe called out to Edward and asked with concern, Edward, how are things between you and my sister? Edward was about to get into the car when he turned around and glanced at Chloe. How many days do you have left here? Edward asked. My parents are coming back the day after tomorrow, Chloe quickly replied. That seemed to be the first time in a long time that Edward had taken the initiative to ask her about something. For a second, she was really flattered. I see. Edward only responded. I'm really grateful that you took me in. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to take care of myself, and it would have affected my parents' travel plans, Chloe said sincerely, and her smile was cute. It's nothing. Edward nodded. With that, he planned to get into the car. Edward. Chloe grabbed his arm fiercely. Edward's eyes flickered, but at that moment, he did not push her away. I didn't affect your relationship with my sister, did I? Chloe asked. She had a guilty look in her eyes, which would make men take pity on her. No man could reject her like that. Previously, she had never had the chance to show herself in front of Edward. Since she would be leaving the day after tomorrow, she had to seize the opportunity. It has nothing to do with you, Edward answered in a different way. Therefore, was their relationship affected? Did Candace take the initiative to kiss Edward because of Paige? Did they wake up so late this morning and was Edward going to work so late because they had a long argument last night? She could not help but admire Edward and Candace. It was obvious that the two of them had a conflict, but they could pretend that nothing had happened. If anything happens between you and my sister, I'll really blame myself- Dash. Don't think too much. Edward interrupted her. She really couldn't see much emotion on his face. I'm leaving. As he spoke, he pushed Chloe away and got into the car. Chloe did not dare to say anything about that. Due to her identity, she was still a little wary of Edward. She hurriedly waved and said, Take care, Edward. The chauffeur respectfully closed the car door for Edward before returning to the car and driving away. In the car, as Edward took off his suit, he instructed the person on the other end of his phone, prepare another suit jacket for me. Okay, leader. May I know when you need it? I'll be in the office in 20 minutes. Yes. The other party was extremely respectful. The chauffeur glanced at the leader who was sitting in the back seat through the rearview mirror. All these years, the leader had kept an absolute distance from women and would never let any woman touch him. It was as if he was keeping his chastity for someone. He had been standing beside the leader just now, staring at him as he got into the car, so he saw that woman touching the leader's sleeve. However, the leader took his suit off just because of that. Before this, he did not know who the leader was doing this for, but ever since he met his wife, he had a rough idea of who the woman he was doing it for was. At night, after Candace coaxed Paige to sleep, she went back to her room to sleep. Edward would probably return even later tonight. After all, he woke up so late that morning. Therefore, she left a dim light on for him and did not plan to wait for him to fall asleep together. Yet, when she closed his eyes, she could not seem to fall asleep. It was not that she missed Edward. Instead, she kept thinking about the diary. She just had the urge to open it and see what was written inside. What exactly was in it that made her think of it so much? Candace turned over and sat up on the bed, frustrated. She wanted to go downstairs to get a glass of water so that she could get some fresh air and not think too much. She was walking down the stairs when she suddenly stopped in her tracks. It was because she saw Edward, who had already returned. She watched as he sat at the bar counter in the living room, seemingly drinking alone. Her heart skipped a beat. That scene should be an unfamiliar scene, but she suddenly found it extremely familiar. It was as if she had seen Edward like that before. However, they had never interacted with each other before this, and they clearly did not know each other at all. Why did she find that scene so familiar? Then, her head began to hurt. 
The more she tried to recall that familiar scene, the more her head felt like it was about to explode. It felt as if the truth was about to break free. She bit her lip lightly, and just as she was about to go downstairs, she saw a woman walking over from the other side of the hall. The woman was always there, but she had just left for a while and now she was back. She watched uneasily as Chloe sat opposite Edward, took Edward's wine bottle, and poured a glass for Edward and another for herself. Chloe was even drinking with him. Candace watched for a few seconds before she turned around and went back upstairs. She just felt that it would be a little abrupt for her to appear at that time, and she was not that thirsty. When Edward noticed her departing figure, he picked up the wine glass and downed it. Edward, drink less. It's not good for your body to drink too much, Chloe quickly called out to him worriedly. Edward ignored her and took the bottle to pour himself another glass. Edward, aren't you happy? Why are you suddenly drinking so much? If you're unhappy, tell me. I want to share your burden. Chloe seemed very considerate. 